Yep, what's going on, y'all? It's the Needs No Podcast. Welcome back to another episode. We are here. We made it. Ooh. We made it. I don't know if y'all can hear that in my voice, but we we are almost there for real, for real. What do you mean there? What do you mean by there? What are you referencing? August seventeenth. Oh ah, shit. shit! August seventeenth. I'm hyped. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. I'm you talking about our mixer. Our, our mixer? annual mixer. Our par- so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm conflicted with the oh. branding of this event. Okay. Because obviously we do want to invite people. We also want to promote this thing, mm-hmm. right? Like it's a big thing. This is the only time that we really get to connect with people yeah. in a real way. Show face. So it's important that you kind of promote it in the right way. And I'm conflicted because the initial uh, inception of this podcast, I'm sorry, of this event mm-hmm. was to just socialize, networking, and a mixer is mm-hmm. more like That's a social call, gathering. Yeah, right? we're like like a little cocktail. Yeah, it's you a know, what cocktail. Saying? You get a little drink. You meet somebody. Yeah. You have a business card. Yeah. <laughs> Our mixer turned into a full, full blown, blown event, basement like, party, literally. And, like, and typical need to know fashion. It's not. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to promote <laughs> it anymore. So when I invite people, like mm-hmm. I say, it's a mixer, but they like mm-hmm. mixer doesn't even sound fly. Now, mixer, mixer, no, fly. I, lo- I, I love like the word mixer yeah. because you're gonna mingle with the people you're mm-hmm. meeting. I love the false advertisement of the no, word no. mixer. <laughs> no, me too. Because I want us to, you know, we're gonna do this like for many, many years and throw an annual party. And even when it's like fucking, we're selling out arenas. I want to still call it a little mixer. No, for sure. <laughs> I like that. even That's when it's good. in a like freaking that. stadium. Because it's like sarcasm, that. you know. Yeah, yeah, I like that. You're like pull up to our little mixer because it's not a mixer. Like, <laughs> and we have fireworks. It's and a mixer. We get lit. What do you do at a mixer? Get you meet new people and you mingle. Get lit and mix. But I don't. The only thing I mix at this mix is drinks. <laughs> like, I knew that joke was coming. Like I, I don't mix. It's honesty, it's like, it's yeah, but I, whatever. I'm excited. Nah, me too. I ain't gonna I'm lie. Excited. Party uh, of the year. Wait. It might be too late for you guys to get tickets, but you can try. <laughs> yes, that's Yo. August 17th. I don't know if the, the the link should be available. Even if it's not available for you to click, that means that it's sold out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we tried to tell y'all for like two, three months. At no, this point. every single yeah. year our party our party sells out early. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go. Well, next time we tell you guys, take it seriously, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that being said, I uh, go by the name Savon, S-A-V-O-N. You done had a little laugh in your shit, huh? <laughs> you know how I do. What's funny? You know how I do. What's, I, do, Every, I do Everything about the equation is funny when I'm in the room. What you mean, nigga? <laughs> fuck you talking about, This nigga going to smooth nigga school. What you talking about, gay? <laughs> S-A-V-O-N is Savon in the building. Again, y'all can catch us August 17th, yeah. Saturday in Brooklyn, New York. It's a vibe, man. That's a fact, y'all. Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy, A, as always. The Paco Rabon Poppy. Never alone. I'm always with the posse. Hello guys, it's me, Reggie. I feel extra blessed to be here because, well, I just feel very offended because you guys did not acknowledge today. What's today, Reggie? Nobody wished me a happy left-handers day. Oh my God. Hello. Th- Yo, bro, I thought it was her Reggie. birthday. Hello, say wait. I, I was about to be saying that. Bar- you, you were at my birthday I, party. Nah, no, but still. <laughs> but men got PTSD yeah, when yeah, a yeah. woman say, you forgot my day. Like, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. They, it's either two what, days, no, the anniversary of the birthday. Facts. You know what girls are there like, do you remember what today is? Yeah, I hate And it. then they sweat. Like, I'd be stuck. I'd be no, mad but as happy hell. International Lefties Day to all my fellow lefties. I love that fact that I'm a lefty. I don't know why. I just like, it's, I don't know. I'm, I thank God and my parents for not changing that shit when I was in preschool <laughs> and just dare to be different. Wait, you, you, can, you, you can change your dominant hand? My my mom told me and that they, they noticed me writing with my left hand as a little cute little Asian girl. And then they were like, <laughs> oh, do you want us to switch her, or, like train her to her right hand? Because the world, you know, is against us lefties and everything is catered toward right people, uh, right handed people. So, and my mom was like, no, let her be different. I didn't realize the <laughs> world was against y'all until I was in school mm-hmm. and realized, you know, when you were in like middle school or elementary school, the desks were set up to have yes. your right your right For elbow sure. uh, uh, fall on the desk. Yes. Yeah. So like, what, what did you fuck? do with your left elbow like, when you were right? About- you had to suspend your arm in the air, right? <laughs> like, what about me, bro? And Damn. like, um, pain. whatchamacallit, and like scissors and golf clubs, but it's okay, lefties, I feel you. We are together. We are bonded forever. <laughs> and you guys yes. are smart. Being a lefty is like a form of being black. But here we go. There's a correlation there somewhere. So so where is it? So so where is it? Her experience was this world was not designed for her. You ready to party? When I walk out of this studio, I know the social construct Mm -hmm. of this country was not designed for my black ass. And no, to add on to that, you know, but yet again, us lefties and black people in a world that is against us, we still flourish. Now, white Mm. people, white lefties out there, that don't mean you could say nigga. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) We had a cute little analogy going. I know Savon done got y'all excited with that little shit. Calm down now. Inclusion. 
It's I important. love my lefties. It's important. It's important. Shout out to all the lefties. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And shout, shout out, to, out to Pierre. Wait, we got it. Alex, you intro yourself? Yeah, I did. Uh, Yo, what, what you doing? What you doing? Yeah, right I'm saying, I'm, press, I'm, Pierre, I'm, I'm, so I'm pushing I'm pushing all these it. buttons. My fault, my fault. <laughs> I'm pushing, <laughs> I was pushing buttons. Everybody has been introduced on the Needs to Know podcast, right, cool, except cool, cool. for you, my good brother, Pierre. What's going on? So, cool. What's up? It's Pierre. What's up? How you doing? Cool. All the intros nice. Cool. All right, let's get that out the way. Yo, I got a PSA to make. Uh-oh. Jinx. I, I love all my Caribbeans, right? Caribbean massive. I love my Haitians, Dominicans, oh my God, for sure. What Jamaicans, all Me that, too. right? I love them all. All we, of them. We bet. But I must say, right? PSA to my Jamaicans. Listen up. Why going? All my Jamaican stories, I gotta stop making mac and cheese. It's not it. Yo, first of all, don't do that. Don't do that. Wait, wait, actually, nah, no, no, but, but Pierre's Haitian, Americans. though. Facts. Pierre's Haitian, though, and Haitian people make a lot, make really good mac and cheese. But Pierre is, I'm not even gonna put it on the Haitians. Just, let's no, leave it for the Americans. Why are you violence? But Pierre is baked macaroni pie. It's, it's, it's supposed it's They not call it. it macaroni pie. It's not mac and cheese for them. Well, but they should stop. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> well, let me interject here. Two things, two things, right? Because as a black American, <laughs> we don't have many things that's in our favor. This is the second time <laughs> no, in the last ask. five minutes that you said that. <laughs> now, this is your time to shine. Bro, this is, Reggie, this is time to shine. Nah, because <laughs> Pierre always talk about he's Haitian. He got Haitian pride. Yeah, Alex, right. Nigerian. Nigerian pride. Right, right. Korean pride with Reggie. I I ain't got shit. You nigga. are you have the most. You got Black American cheese. so Facts. much culture. Nah, what do you nah, mean? Nah, nah. I don't know shit. You the melting pot. I think on the somebody pot. asked me yeah. where my great grandmother was from, and I said the cotton field. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's not funny, but it's, it's, it might be some accuracy. Bro, that's, there. I'm that, sorry. That's the only Yo, reference what? I got. So okay. Okay. being a Black American, not really having any roots outside of this country, essentially, right? Yeah. yeah. Mac and cheese is our thing. Yeah, no, no, it's a very Facts. Caribbean thing too, though. Nah, but they nah. don't really make it like us. Nah, 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 nah. They don't make it like us. Yeah, the no. Haitians would like to talk. Nah, facts. The Haitians, Haitians are like, yeah. yo, our, our rice is good, better than all of the other Caribbean. We ain't Shout out to that. the black rice. Our macaroni, our baked macaroni is Dijon? fire. Dijon is Jean Jean. When it Jean-Jean. comes to mac and cheese, leave it, leave it in the states. This is a black American yeah. cuisine. Y'all got a few things. Y'all got bacon. Like, like y'all got, nah, that, y'all got some that's racist. Saying, like, y'all got some shit. Burgers, that's they got Mac and cheese is not racist. <laughs> nah, nah, <laughs> nah. Let's just say soul food. Soul food is a Black mm. American thing. I think mm. mac and cheese is a staple in the Black community. Mm. Yeah. Again, as we all know. Yeah. But I just think people who grew up, you know. From the descendants of slaves, yo, just say, make that shit a little bit better. Yo, say, it's like grits. Yo, I can't <laughs> fuck with us on the grits. I tried. Yo, you, you but, like a uh, fried chicken and um. Uh, collard greens and uh, for sure, my family gets that? really, really, really busy. Mm. Like, ask about my grandmother, bro. You like watermelon Which one? too? Uh, what happened? You like watermelon too? Why? Why would you assume I like watermelon? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just asking a general question. You see, nigga, just asking a question. That's not general. That's actually re- very specific to a certain <laughs> fruit. Now, why would you ask this black American if he like watermelon? Because it's filled with water, and I thought it would do like hydration. I, I, Stereotypes, I, man. I appreciate hydration, and yes, I do like watermelon. What the fuck is that? You know, I mean, Korean, is Koreans scam. also are obsessed with watermelon, and fun fact, we are also obsessed with fried chicken, so, you know. Mm, I feel like watermelon is a scam. No, I, I don't believe that. It's genuinely so good. <laughs> it's just water. It is, but it's so good. And melon. It is pretty good. But I feel like a lot of cultures make mac and cheese in different ways. That's like me saying like, oh my God noodles mm. one culture owns it like we all make it in such different ways but who makes it the best did y'all know that mac and cheese was a casserole the anyway i'm so isn't it's like it's a casserole macaroni Yo. pie really think of macaroni <gasps> and cheese as a casserole Wait, but, it's not a side it's none of that other no, shit y'all think i'm gonna tell is. you why it's not a casserole it because is. everybody doesn't bake their mac and cheese like yeah, in that true. dish, the casserole dish. I know what nice. you mean. That mm-hmm. casserole, that's what you got to put in that motherfucker oven, mm-hmm. get that nice little brown mm-hmm. on, get that char. Some niggas no, is the, just raw dog no, and the cheese. And just real mac and noodles. cheese is a casserole. Yes. Okay. That's Yo, the only mac and cheese I know. It's on my. It's on my bucket list to try a white person's green bean casserole. <laughs> good luck. I've had it before. Yo, it's, actually, it's good. <laughs> Yo, Ken, we need your help. Yeah. We need a potluck, okay? I'm not even. I'm not even joking. Like Karen, I heard that shit. Is, I heard that shit is mad good. Yeah. Karen, yeah. Karen said his mom makes a mean green bean casserole. Did he actually he say that? Yeah, yeah he said know. that. What about the meatloaf? What's the meatloaf what's the, like? What's the meatloaf? He, he said two thumbs up. Ooh, two of them. That's how I know it's okay. Hitting. Well, speaking of you know consuming things, you know the last time we had everybody go ahead. If you're on audio right now, switch over to the YouTube. Uh, up, make that up. switch room. It's fucked up. So <laughs> this is fucked up. Uh, 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 last time we consumed <laughs> things on the pod. Pierre had these gift bags displayed for the boys, and mine says, 
this gift is on fire because what's about to go down? You know, it's just a celebration of the mixer. I just want to commemorate this moment. You guys are triggering me. I want to make clear what Reggie is saying, y'all, if you didn't catch that episode. Uh -huh. uh, there was an episode here a few weeks ago that I would like to forget about. <laughs> and at the end of the episode, uh, Pierre told us to open up gifts that he had mm -hmm. told us to leave alone, yep. the same way Reggie is. And by the end of the episode, we opened up the gifts. And you know what was it? The hot chip challenge. The one chip challenge where Savon almost got carried off in an ambulance. But let me stop stalling. <laughs> Pierre, oh my God, I feel like Oprah I'm because I'm triggered. like, Pierre, if you reach down to your left. <laughs> oh, shoot. You're I got one too. Uh -oh. You get a bag. You get a bag. You get a bag. Everybody get a bag. Don't look at it yet. Don't That's look tough. at it yet. Should I show the fans? The, if you, fans, if you can, but like, I don't want you to miss their reactions as well. Okay, cool. Like when they open it. So let me stop stalling, you know. I'm, I'm scared, Reggie. I'm, I'm, I'm yo, tripping. Reggie, I'm I just told you I'm, I'm black tripping. American. The one chip challenge, one of the things, part two. Being a black American, we we like, okay. PTSD is embedded in don't, us. Don't open it yet. Hold it in your hands. Hold it. Okay. Pierre, don't, don't like, we could switch, right. you know. Yeah, I got you, I got you. Okay. All right, so really quick. Um, <laughs> the bag is it, giving hot. And then there's also a fire hydrant, like a, a, a fire extinguisher. I'm sorry, not a fire hydrant. Y'all triggering yeah. me. Yeah, I better because stop, bro. I was contemplating morally, should I do this? But then I went to the store and I saw these bags with fire on them. So I was okay. like, fuck it, let's do it. Whatever it is, Alex. On three. <laughs> you go last. No, no, no. No, yeah, I want you I'm guys to open last. at the same time. Yeah, no. Same time? You, you want us to do it at the same time, Reggie? You lucky twin said yeah. it. You lucky she said it. Ready? That. Go. Open it. I'm scared right now. You saw I shouldn't be scared? It got some hot fire on it. Oh shit. <laughs> Reggie, no! <laughs> Reggie! Yeah! Pierre, you can open yours as well. Oh, Reggie, you bought me some drink? <laughs> but keep the camera on them as well. Wait, Reggie, you bought us some drink? <laughs> so I bought the guys some gifts. Oh, you knew I needed a hat. Yeah, because <laughs> my hell on that fucked up guy. No! I ain't got enough hats. So I prepared my answer for this. Reggie. So this is hard. I like this. This is though. this is Thank my you. favorite brand, Veil. Oh, this is hottest tough. brand out of New York. I'm about to cross. Oh wait, Pierre, did you open yours? Yeah, yeah. Yay! Like Do you like yours? Hold it up, hold nah, it up, hold it up. Fine, Yay. Dude. So nah, you know, I just want to show my appreciation for my guys. I appreciate I'm about it. to cry. And That's love. No, because Alex, you know what's so funny? Can that you hold it up? Like, that looks like an Alex. <laughs> like, I know. You don't have that in your closet. I'm like, nah, nah, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't. So the reason why? She's okay, fly, genuinely, yo. I That's just tough. did this because I want to get you guys a little gift. Thank you. Nah, you know, Reggie. I want to thank buy you. my guys. Truly, thank you. Reggie. I want to trip my guys. Why did you? Well, hold you on, let me get the bag. Let me let me make sure. But I wanted to like throw you guys off. Reggie, you didn't have to do that. Hold on, I have my reasoning. I love this. I love this material too. Yo, Alex, I can tell you was a messy ass kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why does shit look I like this no in front of you, bro? Kid, nigga, I got excited. <laughs> Fuck wrong with you. So, Tracks. Alex's, if you guys go on YouTube, you'll see Alex's piece. It's a statement piece, Alex, I know. Just it's trust fire. me, though. Trust me, though, you could pull it off. Trust I, me, no, no. trust me, trust me. Reggie, I already formulated the fit I'm about to put on with this. <laughs> so, a quick story. This will take, this will take like two minutes. So, mm. I saw that piece that Alex is holding up. They posted it and I immediately was like, Alex needs this. Yeah, like, facts. cause you know how he looks good in like flannel. Yeah, that's his yeah. vibe. Pick me up, y'all. That's, yeah. no, that's, that's your vibe, bro. I, I, I stopped buying flannels when I see you oh, wearing it. Alex owns flannels. I do. Yeah, I'm a flannel your, owner. That's your look. I ain't gonna lie. So when I saw it, I, I, I was looks. like, I just see, I just have to get this for Alex. Like, I have to do it. And so <laughs> this was formerly like a month ago. Remember when Kieran texted you guys, what's your shirt size? Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, and I never spun the block on that. Cameron, you maniacal motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so for So us tourists, you know. Bye. And then wow. um, I looked at the brand. I was like, let me just buy gifts for the guys. And I picked a hat because, you know, Savon loves hats. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And also, and I didn't. You ain't never going to see me without one. That's a flower. Yeah, I didn't want to, like, buy something from the brand that, like, is not your style, like, force <laughs> yeah. you to wear, you know. Now, this is, and this is a color I could uh, get off with mm -hmm. a lot. And don't try so it thank you. If it doesn't fit you, I'm going to be sad. So try it on <laughs> okay. after. All right. So and it's then tough. Pierre loves, you guys can't see his, but he loves like, you know, athleisure, athletic yeah. looking things. Yeah. I, li I like this cut too. And the material is nice. Right? It's like a little, you know, oh, you, a little boxy. Like you about to change in that shit right now. <laughs> yeah, keep your clothes on, bro. <laughs> Well, he got his clothes on, bro. He's like, about to take it off. Like, like relax. Change, and man. then the last part of it was last week, Savon brought up, we were just talking pre-production and stuff, yeah. and he was like talking about uh, outfits for the mixer. Remember, he brought I it up. Did. I was like, ooh, here's my chance. Because I, <laughs> I like, I slick, I was like, wait, Alex, talking about brands, like, Clothing. Do you like this brand by any chance? And he was like, "Yo, I love Veil." He did. She gas. Yo, you got gas. Yo, bro, you got shit gas like that nigga. Yeah. And he and I showed him the Damn. exact flannel I got him because I was worried it was gonna be a little too much for him. You know, it's a statement he loved piece. It. But he specifically said he was like, "Yo, I would only wear the blue one," and that's the one I got. You. Oh, he smart. I'm not gonna lie. But I bought it a month ago before you said that. I wow. see how you bagged your boyfriend. Thanks. I know. 
I the game, it. the game is ill. Facts. You want to know what's crazy? What's up? Her and her man, yeah. the game that they got, yeah. <laughs> like that, that shit, shit is, like EA. Bro, that top, shit top is tier. crazy. That shit like EA Sports. That's, that's why we're happy fuck. together. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of wild. Right? Yeah, wild. on the Patreon, we talked about something he did for me that was crazy, yeah. and then but see this type of shit I be doing. Which is yeah. why you should go subscribe to our Patreon page right now. Ooh, for sure, that's Patreon.com forward slash Need to Know Podcast. Go do that. There's new content up and active. I heard people say that you know they don't trust us because we haven't been releasing content well for the last couple weeks at least the last mm -hmm. month or two going into now that we, we've had a plethora of content over there so go check it out reggie i don't know what to say because now let me and Savon look like dummies with no gift for you it's okay i'm not a materialistic person i am the gift <laughs> See? Who told you that? of course who, who told you that i am the gift <laughs> if we be <being laughs> real like if i'm being honest in my own head like that's that was an intrusive ass <laughs> that Which, just uh, came out i am the gift <laughs> that's the type of shit i would say but yes I am the gift. hopefully wow, right. you guys Thank you know in the winter you guys can because these are like winter pieces so. i'm about to, i have to wear it on the podcast now i'm gonna rock that out to mix it for and real then, nah, fact. i couldn't i couldn't because this is literally for you know team camaraderie before the mixer right. just want to celebrate cannot leave our guy kieran out got you a little duncan gift card Karen needs Duncan because he don't sleep. <laughs> he don't sleep. Our, our man Karen loves Duncan, so I'm gonna give this to you. Karen smiles from ear to ear. Oh, he does. I'm not gonna lie. Pop mom taking care of us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like that pop mom. I don't, I don't like that shit. <laughs> <laughs> my fault to it. My fault to it. Don't call me that shit. My fault to it. My fault to it. I apologize. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's hilarious. It's funny that you got us closed yeah. because. <laughs> okay, transition. I, I was getting ready. <laughs> I was getting ready today, or maybe you know what? I'm so fucking lying, okay. and I hate to be that guy who feels like I'm promoting something, like tying it back, but I'm really not. So Pierre, um, he created a video uh, promoting the venue that we have in Brooklyn, right. the oh rooftop. It's a vibe, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize. So I, we were very conscious because Reggie was there too. We were very conscious of not being on camera while he was filming this beautiful, beautiful venue that we're going to have oh, our mixer in. Were we doing that? Oh, shit. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know. know. Nah, I he, was like, he told me and I was like, oh, okay, let me get down again. Yeah, I was just like, yo, just get yeah. the venue. You don't have to have like me and Reggie in it. Like, just right. get the vibe. Whatever I was still the case at work, be. right? Yeah, yeah, you're still at work, so yeah. you couldn't be there. Um, But the first shot of the video, it was me. It was like he, he was filming me filming the venue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And... It made me really like I ran it back like 18 times. <laughs> because what? I never You're seen so vain. How no, listen, how <laughs> often do you see a full body? Hmm? How often do you see your full body? Is what I'm asking you in the audience. You ain't got a full body mirror in that house of yours? It's crooked. <laughs> it's, <laughs> Wait, what, what the fuck? What? Is, nah. this a, is this a but, man so thing? Nah. There's a full body mirror. Right there in the uh, studio. So you're looking at it. I bought a full body mirror from Walmart. <laughs> yes, and it's Not like the a, college one. No, ones. it's like a trick mirror. For I didn't know it was a. Why trick. would you get it? Oh, okay. it make your hips curvy. <laughs> She gave don't, you the BBL. Don't say that, bro. She, that, shit, that shit made you <laughs> red, bro. So, bro, no lie. It made so, you bottom heavy. Bro, so every time I look at myself in my full body mirror. Apple bottom I got, jeans. I got like, I look like a Coke bottle and I, I can't hey, really okay, get it. Okay, hourglass. For real, I can't get a, a real good gauge on how I look in my mirror because I fucked up. Yeah. My son said he curvy. I think I bought like the OnlyFans mirror, bro. I swear Wait, to God. Wait, so you're, you're saying you don't like the way you look in that mirror? No, that's the only way that I see my full body is in a curvy mirror. So I feel like my bottom can't you, just, like, look at, can't you just like look at yourself? It's so different though. <laughs> Okay. It's so different oh. if somebody were to take a picture of you and then when you look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah. So anyway. We take we take full body pictures all the time though, Sable. We really don't though. When guests are here, we we take them, I feel like. Yes, we do. But again, it's the video. It was a video. What he posted was yeah. a video. What okay, he shared was a video. So you're kind of like, <laughs> yes, whatever. I'm looking at it. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit. I, I, I really appreciate this in particular video. It's the small things, huh? But when I looked in, and maybe I just saw this in my own head, mm -hmm. because when I looked in the mirror, I feel like I got hit with the strongest type of body dysmorphia ever. Oh my God. Because of my you, mirror. Not you. It was the height. Was I don't know if it's the mirror or if it's really in my head. Wait, so you're saying you like the way you look in that I appreciated video. the way that I looked in the video that we posted to oh, promote Oh, you're feeling it. yourself. That's the oh, point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. But yeah. Yeah. when I looked at, like... On a day to day, I uh -huh. really think I suffer from body dysmorphia. Let's let's uh, read what body dysmorphia is. Uh, body dysmorphic disorder (BDD) is a mental illness. Wait, what? They say you sick. <laughs> BDD. Yeah, BDD. BDD. You got a mental illness. 
What is the I'm just B- saying what they said. What does BDD stand for? It ain't Big Dick Danny. It's <laughs> body, body dys- dysmorphic disorder. <laughs> oh, because I thought you was the the D and body. Mm-hmm. I thought you was counting that as body dysmorphia. BDD. <laughs> he was like, wait, what? Like, fucking slow. <laughs> <I'll add it. laughs> okay, look. First, they say you got mental illness, twin. You my guy. But you know, we gonna keep reading. We knew this Ca- true. <laughs> characterized by constant worrying over a perceived or slight defection in appearance, mm-hmm. repetitive behavior. Behaviors are performed in response to those concerns about appearance. BDD usually starts in the teenage years when concern over physical appearance is common. I ain't gonna lie. I feel you though. Do you? Finally! Because I'm not 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> wait, what? That's you not, never, you're not, you're not, wait, not. So is it like, do you think you're 6'6"? Six, six? Or like, what, what, what I, way? No, no I think I look, that I'm, I'm bigger than I probably really am. Like, when I wake up, and yeah. I look at my my mirror, and again, my mirror is a little curvy. It's weird. It's different. So maybe that I need to get a new mirror. Clearly, I'm a mirror it's my, yeah, Yo, yeah, yeah. and when Eden was on here, he did say you have nice thighs. So it played <laughs> into the fact that maybe I'm just like I, I dead ass think I got a form of body dysmorphia. Bro. No, but honestly, I like if you're not joking, that is like extremely common. It's so interesting hearing men talk about this because women, we we've been no noon about like body dysmorphia like a lot of us feel it yeah that's fucked up i never yeah. knew about it because it's like honestly we look fine but when we look in the mirror we see something completely different yeah so like, mental illness we all got mental illness I don't even know. Like in, in my mind, mind i embrace yeah. it yeah. you know like, i go to therapy facts, facts. And i still think of myself as like the skinny kid oh um, them days up my fault. skinny legs skinny arms Hey yo, Alex, what was you about to say? No, 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 not cause not cause Stop, I'm trying to say no guard. Bro, you a strong nigga, bro. Your pectoral muscles is like one a person, two person thighs and one, you know what I'm saying? Like pectoral, great word. Yeah, you know, I don't know how you still look at yourself as skinny. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's like me looking in the mirror and say, yeah, hey, you light skin. I don't this is like a backhanded compliment. <laughs> no, nah, that's my man, because he got muscles. It's hey, like, yeah. I don't know why you think you're skinny here. That's my man. He got muscles. You thought muscles. you was light skin? Never. Uh, you can't do you can't grab that from there. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. But I mean, at least you're where you landed now. It's a good thing. Like you see yourself, you're like, oh, I like the way I look. That's yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's a good place to be at. It is yeah. fucked up though. And I do want to empathize with anybody who struggles with that. Yeah. Because they really sure. like there's some people who are really going through it. I mm. think I have a slight case. Mm. But yeah, I wanted to bring it to the podcast. That's, that's really fucked weird. up. And it'll be the most beautiful people too, right? Yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I said people, nigga. I ain't say say for. What the fuck? Thank you. The Leo Wu is jumping out. The fuck? Thank you. What that mean, Reggie? All right, salute to you, beautiful nigga. Uh huh. <laughs> thanks, Aww. thanks, twin. <laughs> nah, y'all are cooking. In fact, don't say twin. <laughs> that shit not for you. You right. You Yo, was what right. You mean, twin? <laughs> nah, nah, See what we're good. little team camaraderie moment with that? Yes, yes. Just keep buying this shit. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you guys yeah. gifts every month. No. <laughs> all right. Shout out to all the people. Bodies more fear. We love you. Go to your therapist. <laughs> No, no. All right, Yo, fault. shout out to everybody with body dysmorphia. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that sounded like, right? Yeah. Hey, yo, put your lighters in the sky if you got body dysmorphia. Hey. That's called BDD. I'm wild. Wait, I'm gonna... Is this offensive? <laughs> no, nah, my fault. Oh my I don't know. Oh no, nah, my fault. I love y'all. Just know no, no, I no. suffer with it too. I'm not making fun of you guys because I, li- I literally go through this as a yeah. woman. So I why suffer. you ain't say that when I said it? Why you ain't bond with me? Said, let you I you but why you ain't bond with me though? I, I, d- did. I literally said all most women like go through this. All right, because of the yeah. pressures of us on society. <laughs> oh shit, y'all we gotta great. clip that. Oh, we're gonna get canceled. Actually. This is great. Never mind. Oh man, all right. I got a question for you guys. You, get, you, you let all your laughs out, right? Oh, sorry. I, he, <laughs> yo, one thing about Alex, he hates when he's about to intro a topic and me and Savon are focused. I'm like, y'all good? <laughs> he, he'll be like, can you guys pay attention? <laughs> he's like, all right, settle down, settle down. Like, settle down. We're about to pivot. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, this is a good. question. I'm good, I'm good. Lotto, Doja Cat, Meg Thee Stallion, walk into the studio, all perform on the same oh, exact song. shit. Guess what I'm Whoa. doing? <laughs> What are you doing, say? Nah, keep going. No, <laughs> Wait, you I asked want. Him a no, 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 no. That was rhetorical. Okay, Go, keep going. Doja Cat, Lotto, Meg Thee Stallion, walk Ooh, into the studio God. to do to complete a song. You keep interrupting. My fault. One more time. Doja Cat, Lotto, Meg Thee Stallion. I can't even say her name no more. Walk into the studio <laughs> to perform a song together. Who walks out with the best verse? Now I'm pulling this because I saw some discourse on the Joe Budden podcast about uh, the folks over there. Having, you know, picking sides. Some people believe that Lotto is a stronger lyricist. Some people believe that Doja Cat is a stronger lyricist. I wanted to insert Meg Thee Stallion in that 
because I feel like that trio, those three are basically running uh, mm -hmm. women rap right now. And they can really, really, really rap. Right? They can really rap mm -hmm. and they really sell. <clears throat> right? For sure. So for the most part, they cover all bases. I wanted to ask you guys, mm -hmm. who would you pick having the best verse after that session? Best verse. Best verse. Mm. Best verse. Think hard. Think about booty okay. shaking. Think of, like, it's shit to think about. <laughs> See, it's hard for me to think. Uh, I never listened to a verse. From I right, get out. No, for no, <laughs> legit, legit. I've heard their verses. You told. I've me. never listened to their. Well, verses. We spoke about. You Doja never listened Cat? to music by Megan Doja or. Y'all not Washington. hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. Oh, you like, looked at. Oh, you looked no, at them. I've heard them. <laughs> I, like I know their music. I cannot recite a single verse, and that's fine. I'm you not saying what? there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's a fact. I you know what? You know what? That. That, no, no, that's no. fine because it's like. I, you know, I'm not really like, oh my God, you're not tapped in. Because it is like yeah. baddie music. Like, I don't need Savon yeah, to you. fucking, you know, analyze this shit. So, based on if they were to walk, I'm going to answer your first question. Fuck the verse. All right, but. You what, said what, if they walked into the studio. Yeah, what you doing? <laughs> between Lotto, Doja Cat, Meg Thee Stallion. What you going to do? You going to get hookah, right? <laughs> first thing. <laughs> what else is there to do? No, legit. Think about it. I hate when Savon gets his like host voice. He's like, oh, "Do you guys? Would you guys have a drink? You know, like, because he's very like hosty. Like, like, women are. What else is there? Like, like, hey, 1942. 1942. No, I could go to the store. You know, to, you could send yo, someone to the store. Oh, yo, yeah. why you doing? Yo, you That's know bad, me for real. Dude. But now, nah, if they really walked into the studio, who's gonna have the best verse? Yeah, Doja Cat. I was gonna say so as well because on like a technical rap level, yeah. I feel like Doja Cat does things that. <laughs> No, no women in rap do, but I would say my favorite right now because of recency bias is Lotto because I'm obsessed with her album. And I'm going to say all three of them are phenomenal rappers, but I just have to pick like based on the question of verse, verse, yeah, yeah. Doja Cat. Okay. They all can really, really rap for real. Okay. How would you know? Because I've heard them, <laughs> I just didn't listen to them. <laughs> with I was, a bottle in the day. <laughs> I feel I've like you heard them, I, think I you haven't li listened to them. I think you listen to their music by watching their music videos. Am I on to something? Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's how you listen, right? Sometimes great music you gotta videos. analyze. The one the thing visuals. that's, the problem with that is the ears is different than the eyes, nigga. Okay. Um, before Lotto's album, which released this week, uh, Sugar Honey Ice Tea, or last week at least, I would have rocked with you guys. I'm not going to lie to you. I think I would have firmly had Doja Cat at number one. Real talk. And for the most part, I've just seen more boom bap styles from Doja Cat, right? Like, or just the opportunity and ability to go in different realms with rap and her pen. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would have put her at one. After this new Lotto album uh, titled Sugar Honey Iced Tea, I don't even know how to answer this question. I asked you, I'm up for I, I really got them neck and neck because the amount of growth I heard on this project, the amount of, she was able to blend introspection with trap, mm -hmm. with, her, with her, her, her nigga. Like just the blend of it made me realize that she could compete with a Doja Cat. Now mm -hmm. granted, yeah. Doja Cat is probably 1A in terms of lyricism. Booty shaking, that's another See, I don't know but. their lyrics. I know their ability. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm being honest. Sure? And, and I'm not even trying to like, I'm yeah. not even trying to do the whole sexist thing. I don't no, listen no, to no. their lyrics. I, I, I listen to their ability to put words together, to put a verse together, to make a song, to create a song. I don't listen for what they're doing in their verse. But when I hear like, if we talk about performance, right? Mm -hmm. Performance on a song, mm -hmm. um, ball for breath ball. control, ball for bar, mm -hmm. those kind of things, finding the pocket and the, like those things, the cadence, that's what I hear. I don't know exactly what they're saying on a song. So I can't judge the lyrics. I can only judge the performance. And the performance, they're mm -hmm. all at the top of their class when it comes to like mm -hmm. women, hip hop artists, sure. and even males. Like mm -hmm. they'll, they'll outspit, especially Doja Cat. Like, from that perspective is what I'm judging this question on. Literally, if I'm being Doja honest. Cat yeah. headline Coachella did fen a phenomenal show. Megan is an arena artist. Lotto has been doing this since she was little. Like they're all I, I can't pick, actually. I don't know. What the more I think about it, I'm like, yo, they each like bring something so special. We ain't say nothing about Meg the Stallion. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say nah, listen. <laughs> I mean that's I was gonna I was gonna say I love her, but I, like I'm just my, to my answer yeah, is Doja, yeah. Yeah. I would say if I were to one through three it, Doja. Yeah, Meg would go last for me. Meg would go last. And that's a hard last. That's a hard last. Yeah, because that's a big Megan, three. she can, like, I'm thinking about the, um, what's the song? There's some hoes in, in this house. house. There's some hoes in this house. What's the song what? she was what? spinning? What? No, what? she was spinning on I that. Like, I like morning <laughs> checks. All the gobble me, follow me, da 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 me. You see? Gobble me, follow me, give up, follow me. Like, she was giving it up. Like, she was like, suck me, swallow me. Yeah, 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 that bar. Say that bar. Hmm? She was, suck me, swallow me. <laughs> that shit, like, I know she was really giving it up. So 
I'm just going based off what I heard. That's it. <laughs> but they all, I think they all great, and I, yeah. I think they're pushing the genre forward. Yeah. I heard the Lotto mm-hmm. album was fire uh, from a lot of yeah. people, not just y'all. But I heard a lot of people saying like the Lotto album was mm-hmm. tough. And I think she's a complete artist, like you said. We yes. got to see it kind of grow up. Mm-hmm. Um, what what show was it? The J- Jermaine Dupri show that she was uh, on. What was that? Rap like not rap like. It was some show that she was yeah. a contestant rap on. Rap competition. Rap competition. Yeah, it, was, um, it was a rap competition. It was, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's a complete artist and you can tell she cares about the craft. Yeah, she's always wanted to do this. You can tell all three of the women that you mentioned, they all care about the craft. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Like you got other people like a young Miami who, you know, they just wanted to get lit and they got (laughs) lit by doing some shit, but they didn't really kiss. She didn't really give a fuck about the craft. She just wanted to be lit. So I think, you know, that's a great question. But, um, when it comes to the lyrics, I don't really know, but when it comes to talent on the mic and performance on mic, uh, yeah, I think they're all phenomenal. I do think if you sat with, for example, like Lotto's new album and like listen to her it, rap, I do think you're going to be very you, impressed. Like, I implore yeah. you, just give it a listen. Even if yeah. it's one time. It took, it take me back a little bit. That's hard for me. What you mean, nigga? Just press play. It's I'm good not, music. I'm not just a music play. guy and I don't want to hear Stop but you saying can, that. But you this can, is like, why that's the truth. To, it's no, that's, not, that, that's the truth. You enjoy music. So... To not be a music guy would mean that you do not enjoy That's music. That's not true. That's what I'm saying. But when Every people single- hold on, but when people hear you say the things you say, they automatically assume, oh, Savon knows zero about music. <laughs> That's-, That's not true. Savon That's- was a drummer. That's true. Savon yeah. was grew up around music. That's a fact. Stepfather and all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't say that. That you, is true. You can do it. Like, you can put on yes. Lotto's album and enjoy it. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying I want to enjoy it. I'm just not going to go out of my way. Like, my life, and a lot of people that listen to this podcast, and shout out to y'all for listening to Salute. the podcast each and every week, especially the silent listeners. Silent listeners. Y'all have not yeah. been so silent lately. What up? Thank you. We appreciate you. I see you in the Twitter community. I see you in the YouTube comments. Yeah. With that being said, <laughs> there's a lot of things pulling at my attention from... Max, mm-hmm. HBO, mm-hmm. work, YouTube, podcast. There's a ton of things pulling at my attention, right? Mm-hmm. Music is not at the top of my priority list when I need to be fulfilled with content. But what about? So what? that's what I mean by I'm not a music, music guy. guy. Okay. Music is not my first avenue of entertainment or to bypass, even if I'm on a commute. Most people listen to music while they're traveling, while they're commuting. I prefer to consume some type of sports show or a hip hop form, whatever the case may be, is not music is not at the top. So for me, a lotto album for it to cut through to me is gonna take a lot for me to get there. So that's what I mean by I'm not a music guy per se. You, Reggie, when big releases happen, whether you enjoy it or not, it is at the top of your list, whether it be because of your job or your personal interest, yeah. for you to listen to it. Yeah. That's what I mean by I'm not a music guy. I'm glad you cleared it. I just want people to know that. No, I did Me that and for Reggie you. know. For sure. <laughs> yeah, we know. Yeah, she Let- put her she put her whole pussy in this album. No, I'm not going to front clit ride today. <laughs> no, I'm eating clit today. What the hell? <laughs> Eat clit in honor of Lotto's album. Yo, thank, you, thank you. I'm clit riding today. Reggie, get your shit off so I can get my shit off. How did you feel about Lotto's album, Reggie? Literally, from the marketing, from everything, the whole package, <laughs> like what Savon says, she's like a whole package she's beautiful has a fire personality she can make her little tiktoks like the fucking you know labels always pressure artists to like make funny things oh she could just do it naturally she's fly she's young she's beautiful blonde hair like she okay so with this album i love the theme it's a georgia theme she's from clayco and like oh like just clayton county right like in the beginning she went very like trap like very rappy Mm -hmm. very atlanta georgia influence but then as like flows down she got sexy she got like girly Mm -hmm. she just did everything on this album my favorite um song is copper cove with is it honcho Honcho. Honcho, that's my favorite song Mm -hmm. oh my god honcho is really buzzing out atlanta right now. ladies use that song and put it on your story when you put a little selfie you know it works but then <laughs> <laughs> she right listen to red tips uh, i don't know yeah. but yeah i just i don't know i loved it and <clears> honestly <throat> i don't want people to think that whenever i talk about music releases because i'm i'm not that harsh like when i when we talk about music i'm very like forgiving mm-hmm. and i usually do say i like a project but for example like i don't mean to just bring her up for beef sake but like last week i said i didn't really like i spice's album i wasn't really impressed but this one lotto's album like she got it in I terms can, of like she walked in. if you compare the releases <laughs> that beef they, is over yeah, yeah, they yeah. they can they i think it's good to compare them because they came out like two weeks apart from each other lotto lotto on this one are they like, on the same label sure. no. No. no i know i spice okay. is 10k lotto i don't think it's 10k we can look okay. that up in a second All right, um cool. to your point about not being big about music right 
I felt like it took me a while to get big on uh, women rap. I hate saying female rap. <laughs> I just like to say women in rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it takes a lot of talent and ability to get men to actually digest and listen to your music. And I actually want to play it on the car. Right mm -hmm. or actually play it in the leisure. Unless yeah. you're Glorilla. Unless you. Men have yeah. always loved her music. Yeah, yeah. Unless you glow. Yeah, Glorilla. Yeah, you, oh, that's my yeah, that's shit. My, I can't wait to turn it on when lady. I go yeah. home tonight. You know who does that for me? Who? Ooh, Bia. Oh, really? I love Bia. Bia does that for me. Yeah. Okay. Bia's good. I ain't mad at Bia. Yeah, yeah. She had that joint with Riri. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Bia and Boston. And Russ. Can't forget Russ. Can't forget Russ. But that's what this album did. Like when I was digesting, I was like, mm -hmm. you know what, Savon? Let me describe it to you. Okay. This album is basically. Because I got to put things in your words where you really understand, right? It's essentially your culture. It's essentially a bowl of gumbo <laughs> okay. crafted by the finest restaurateurs and vendors at Mardi Gras. Okay. And you see what I'm saying? Meaning, I got trap records. I got some pop rock records. Shit, I even heard some Drake like records, right? Mm -hmm. Where she's talking at her ops. Uh, the inflection of her voice. Mm -hmm. It's funny that uh, the album is titled Sugar Honey Iced Tea because that's how sweet her voice is. Ooh. And I think that really helps her uh, try new styles mm -hmm. and play with new sounds. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, back in the day, you was a rapper. You would go call an R&B singer, right? Yo, I need you to do the hook right here, hook right here, do the bridge, and we out of here. I'm going to lay down the verses. I feel like the people, like the Drakes of the world, like the Lottos of the world, who are just able to have such a palatable voice that could just become very popular, I think that's the cheat code. Yeah, because when she is kind of rap singing on the hook, she actually sounds good. She sounds like she's singing. Yeah, like she sounds good when she does it. Because her voice is so sweet. Mm -hmm. Well, but, why, well, yeah. But, why are you speaking like, to that real quick, mm -hmm. uh, Reggie? Why are you speaking to that? I do want to uh, credit and shout out Nicki Minaj. Oh, for sure. I think Nicki Minaj really introduced that. Obviously, the Drakes introduced that. Um, even a, like somebody like a Ja Rule. But yes, for yes. Lotto to incorporate that, um, that has to go directly to Nicki Minaj. Like we see the influence with Nicki when it comes to Cardi, when yes. it comes to all, all of the, this genre, this era of women in rap, like, yes. as you like to call it. Yeah. A lot of it has to be credited to Nicki. And I think she was one of the first people to use her voice as an instrument for not only the verses, not only to show, yo, I got the bars, I got the cadence, I got the lyrics, but I also have the melodies and I also could provide a hook. And let's mm -hmm. take it a step back just a little bit more, right? Lauren Hill. Mm -hmm. When we heard we the message. We're not going to do that. What do you mean? Why? What do you mean? Simon, <laughs> Simon, what do you mean? No, the she's great. no, she's great. She's great. I'm talking about the talent that she showcased okay. on that, right. on that the project. And the singing and rapping right? thing. I'll yeah. We're going to talk about her later. You're going to get your turn. Mm -hmm. Man, nigga, excited. <laughs> Hold on. We're going to get there, brother. Yes, Reggie. But I'm speaking listening. to, like, since just throwing this in there on the topic yeah. of singing, but also Lotto and her team made great choices on this album because although Lotto can sing the hooks, she did recruit real RB talent like a Coco Jones. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, that, that's uh, my second favorite song on the album. And like uh, just the e just the form candy. Yeah, just the formula candy. of that. Yeah, like yeah. it just works and it was perfect. And it's two of the hot girls right now. And it just this album guy just please tap in. One of my favorite parts <clears> about <throat> the album is how she was able to blend club records along with records that actually have meaning behind them. And I think that's a very difficult thing to do with a young demo, to get young people that also want to turn up, but also kind of sit down a little bit and listen to some introspection. I yeah. think she smoked that. Yeah. I, I think I'm done clit riding, but <laughs> if you haven't already, I implore you guys to go listen to that Lotto album. I'm a fan now. I'm a Lotto fan. I'm yeah. a Ice I've been a fan. Were you not a fan before? You no, I was, but I'm now I'm an Ice Team. No. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, this is your first time seeing her? Hmm? This is your first time seeing her? Hmm? Cause I've been a fan. Now, I don't know what the fuck you've been doing. Like, I've been a fan. You talking about Clay Riley? Like I've been a fan. Like yeah, what the fuck? No, she looked. She looked like a for sure. No, yeah. I'm not talking. I'm just saying from a from talent, me, from music, from a music standpoint. Yeah, like when she puts yeah, out music, it, I'm it. gonna rush to it now. I get it. I'm, I'm gonna rush. It's to funny it. because the complete opposite yeah. or the complete opposite spectrum of a lotto, in in my opinion, mm -hmm. is a young Miami, a young Miami who a uh, Carisha please. As we know, was the number Carisha. one. Carisha, nigga. Carisha. No, it's Carisha. It's Car. It's no, Carisha. It's not. It's I'm Carisha. looking at the motherfucking name, right? What's the it's Carisha. C A R, nigga. But it's Car. pronounced Carisha. What you think Diddy was calling her? Whatever the fuck he wanted. Little so mama. I'm gonna call her whatever the fuck. Wait, no, what? we're, nah, we're nah, gonna nah, pronounce her not, name right. Carisha. 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 All right, cool. Carisha, please. Carisha. <laughs> the opposite end of the lotto spectrum is a Carisha, please. Uh huh. Somebody who isn't focused. <laughs> 
somebody who appears to not be focused when it comes to the music. Mm -hmm. Somebody who appears to not really respect or understand the craft. Because the the the, the worst thing about being in a group, and we're gonna talk about this with the Lauren Hills and the Fugees. Y Clefs and the Food, right? We're mm -hmm. gonna talk about that. But when you're in a group and it's public and you have success, one of the things, the the downsides of that success is there's always a mirror being held up to you because people are always going to see how your counterparts move. Yep. And when it comes to the city girls, we get to see how serious it appears that JT takes her music career. JT coming. JT coming. You get what I'm saying? She just dropped an album. JT, fire album. JT, the album JT, and mm -hmm. again, I will give every album at least one listen before I say I'm never listening again. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Legit. And it yeah, doesn't mean fair. I don't like it. I'm the same way. But it's just, yeah, again, yeah. there's so many other things pulling for my attention. Yeah. Like, do you not understand? Like, I just had some family shit happen. My attention goes to every, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's you. not just what I consume for entertainment. My attention is expanded beyond just leisure. All of us are. But this is work too. Everybody. So it's not completely leisure. Like we do discuss some of this for, stuff. No, it is work. Yeah. yeah. For you and Reggie. <laughs> no, legit. It is work for y'all to listen yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah. Because y'all in the music. My I'm in fucking movies and TV. Like, right? I work for HBO. Y'all work for music entity. So it's a little bit different. Like, right. yes, on the podcast, I do want to be able to have an informed opinion, but I'm not inclined to listen to none of these niggas. <laughs> I'm really not. Yeah. I'm really not. But anyway. The opposite end of a lotto is a young Miami, somebody who doesn't really appear to kind of take this as serious, somebody who just seems like she just wanted to get lit. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, she just returned her podcast. She was a top five podcast. She was winning all of the podcast awards I two years that. ago. Yeah. Being Everything. Drink Champs. Being everybody. Joe Budden. Drink Champs was hot as fucking <laughs> yeah. fish grease. And she was smoke Like, they was having Kanye West. They was on a run with Kanye, Big Sean, The Game, all of these people. And she somehow was beating them by putting out four episodes a year. Right? It looked funny. <laughs> We we may have an understanding today, knowing her affiliations right. and who she was dating, and his power, and his control, and his ego, and his willingness to do whatever the fuck he wanted to do, which we all have seen, right? She's back. Carisha, she back. please. Mm -hmm. Kari, wait, how I say Carisha. that? Carisha. Carisha. This supposed to be a coach. Come on. We gotta look up the phonetic spelling. Ain't, she <laughs> ain't <laughs> saying my coach. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Yeah, she, she came she back a, and she spoke on Diddy. Right. She did an episode, uh, a new episode of Carisha Please with her friend, Saucy Santana, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who was also a musician. I wanted to play some of it because in this clip here, and Reggie, I want you to speak to this too, though, before I play this clip. The City Girls started off really big, right? Yeah. Yes. I fucking remember their first tape, like with the cover of them sitting in the kitchen. Like, I remember when people were like, yo, have you heard this song? Like, have you heard this duo? And then they fucking exploded. I think that was like 2018, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. What do you think some of the things uh, like their up? fan base gravitated to that they, you know, that they liked about the two of them? Whores. <laughs> That's fair. Everybody likes Like the fact whore. that they were talking about like, scamming men and talking their shit and just mm. being like yeah i want a bag and i'm in his too like that that type like of fun, shit fun type of music yeah okay okay all right and well. being from miami being lit it young. was whole activity too it was whole oh, it was sure. but hoeing is empowering yeah it was because niggas hoe too like yeah. men is it goes both ways but hey yeah, amber, it was hoes. amber rose did a whole walk just a hoe come on now let me play this clip with y'all now this clip is going to define the <laughs> relationship walk. yeah the slow walk you remember that um, this clip that I'm going to play, uh, Carisha is defining the relationship, the current relationship between her and JT, who now have solo smoke, careers. I'm ready for the smoke. Is you ready? So when it comes to, you know, City Girls and JT, y'all was having an argument on Twitter. You felt like, you know, she was making songs about you. She felt like you were throwing a rock and hot in your hand. Where do y'all stand at today as City Girls and just as sisters, as friends? She ain't all good. And it's not all bad. Like, we don't talk every day. But it's no beef on my end. I still look at her as, like, as family. But it's not like we on the phone, we chatting every day, or we checking in. Like, hey, you know, she posting my shit. I'm posting her shit. It's not, I won't say we beefing, but it's not. Do you feel like taking it to the internet, or do you feel like <laughs> things that happen behind the scenes have went too far that, It'll never be the same motherfucker all day. I feel like once we go to the internet, that's kind of like a... I, I'm the type of person, like, if we feel some type of way, we could hash this shit out 
behind closed doors. You could call my phone. We could text each other. We could cut each other out. But like once they go to the internet, I feel like- I'm not going to lie. When I hear that clip, the one thing that I can take away from it, Saucy Santana, that's a talented motherfucker, gang. Nah, that nigga talented. Because how to, like- Wait, why? I'm, I'm, I'm not, mm-hmm. I can't see the visuals, right? So I'm only listening audibly. Mm-hmm. The way that he's able to change his voice to sound like a fe- like a woman. No, that's his voice. No, no, no but it, listen. Mm-hmm. They did sound similar in they, that clip. It, mm-hmm. The inflection in that, that is talent to convince. Because if you look at him, like, yeah. that's a big nigga. Is it, is it talent or you start acting more like similar to your friends if no, you've been around him? I'm just you saying I mean? it's impressive for him. To have that stature, yeah, <laughs> and, and sound like that. Oh, so you was looking at the stature. What you I've, seen? I've seen that. What you seen? <laughs> He's on that? built like a built. He, like that. He like you know. Mm-hmm. He got. Wait, does he big, identify bro. as <laughs> as a man or? What happened? Serious question. Does, what does he identify? We're not doing that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not serious question. I'm not. I don't know. Why would you ask me that? I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. General question. I really don't know. But I was just saying, based on his voice, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. But I was just saying, based on his voice. It sounds like a woman. <laughs> well, I'm glad she sat down with someone she felt comfortable with because mm-hmm. she actually divulged into things that a lot of people were curious about. Not me, per se. Mm-hmm. But, but, <laughs> You're like, I didn't give a fuck. Yeah, I didn't really care. But people who were fans of the City Girls were very confused as to why the both of them pivoted, mm-hmm. um, why they you know, started to endure on their solo careers. And what we saw as, a, as the tail end of their relationship was we saw Young Miami getting very close with Diddy. And we saw JT got into a relationship with Lil Uzi. Mm-hmm. Which started, I guess, was the start of like their music. Not, de- I guess, you could say decline, but even output. Like you just saw less and less of them over the time. Like they got preoccupied in a sense, right? Like yeah, they yeah. got preoccupied in a sense, and it made me think that it made me think if either of them really had the love for music, or if they really just caught something in a bottle and was just riding the fame. Well, again, I started this by comparing Lotto to Young Miami. And it appears that JT really takes the music aspect of this thing Especially serious. That last album. Yeah, like yep. she she just seems this is where I want to go with my career. And there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, we started this together. And wait, a lot of people, they didn't fuck with my Kai Sinai shit last week. Yeah, you, what are. Do you, I do gotta, you are. I do gotta address that. Speak on it, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the only thing I didn't like is <laughs> what I was speaking to was a whole different dynamic than our dynamic. That's what I was trying to tell you. That's all I was saying. <laughs> and what but, I'm about to say also kind of plays into that too. Well, for the listeners that didn't hear last week, what are you, what are you referencing, bro? Well, last week with the Kyle Sinai situation, obviously he's with a group and y'all have educated me. Thank y'all. Thank you. Pierre, <laughs> uh, Alex, Reggie, commenters. Y'all have informed me that Kai Sinai is a part of a group, a collective, AMP, mm-hmm. and everybody kind of has their own individual thing, but they all came together to do this one thing. Cool. I got that. I understood. Oh, you learned quick. I still stand on Kai Sinai is the one. I mean, He's still the one, but the one in terms of what? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it, in terms of yeah. I have the most uh, notoriety out of this group. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it doesn't mean everybody else That's is fair. failing. It just means that he just happened to be the one that broke through on a mainstream level. Mm-hmm. He's doing fucking sleepovers with Kevin Hart. Like we can't deny. Yes, he may be the one, but needless to say. When it comes to groups in general, I think one of the things that really allow us to kind of continue to do what it is that we do is that everybody respects each other and everybody knows what it is that they want to do, mm-hmm. right? I'm aware of Alex's aspirations in life. Sure. Mm-hmm. I'm aware of Reggie's aspirations in life. Y'all are aware of what it is that I aspire to be in life, right? Yeah. Yeah. So although our aspirations we have individual places that we want to go, individual endeavors that we want to kind of tap into. We also understand like this is a collective, but we respect that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I think a lot of people get into groups and they just have phenomenal chemistry, right? Like a city girls. And then when they get to the, the, the breaking point or that decision point of, hey, this is where I am and this is where I could go, they, they, they take separate roads. And that's what we're seeing with the City Girls. They got to a point where mm-hmm. everybody knows who they are. JT wants to do music. Yeah. yeah. I want to do music. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to just be Instagram famous. I don't just want to be lit. I want to actually do music where Young Miami seems like, yo, I just want to be lit. Yeah. She, in that interview, it seemed like to me, I was gathering, it seemed like she was very interested in like having a bunch of business ventures, you know, selling things like her merch, her products, her card game. And she was kind of like, okay, let me leverage my popularity and career to do these things instead of like 
going to like a rap camp and like improving on my music. That's what I right. gather from it. And I believe one of the things that hinder the folks in these groups are that people don't really express where they're at in that current moment. Mm -hmm. Because uh, us as people, we, we change. Yeah, There's nothing wrong sure. with that. Sure. But expressing these changes is how the other party can properly communicate or go, you know, go about from that. And if you don't have that, then miscommunication builds. Yeah. Then you start to drift. Then the, the, the want to even want to see each other just dwindles and it's mm -hmm. completely out of the situation and scenario like now. Resentment and stuff. Yeah, and now that resentment builds and it's like, all right, cool. What do we do now? Yeah. We came into business together. We, we're supposed to make money together. And that's one mm -hmm. thing I heard Young Miami mention in this 33-minute uh, uh, response to the world. She mentioned that the group wasn't making any more money. Well, a lot of people that's not in the music business or just entertainment in general and I'm going to be a little bit sexist and that's cool. Fuck it. <laughs> it is what it is. I don't make the rules. But when you have a, a female or a woman artist, it takes a little bit more with the oh, glam, yeah. the glam, with the, yeah. the, oh, the yeah, outfits, yeah, yeah. with the, the wardrobe, with those kind of Prep. things, with the upkeep. Yep. It, it, it's a bigger investment. And I'm not saying it's better or worse because there's a lot of niggas that's in the street that get shot and get killed. So that's a fucked up investment too if that's the type <laughs> of artist that you're investing in. Yeah. But when it comes to a, a female artist, the investment is also their image and their upkeep. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's a lot easier to lose money when you invest in a female group. Now, it's not only one artist, but now I have two yeah. that I have to focus on, two that I have to make sure have their makeup, have their hair, have their entourage, have their makeup artists that they want, the nail techs. Like mm -hmm. it's a little bit more. So it's very easy to see them losing money when you think of it from that lens. Yeah, for sure. I just wish the two of them had more communication. JT is. Well, she's in a relationship but has no kids. Uh, young Miami, I know, has more than one child. So you get into a relationship with a billionaire. But sometimes you gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta do that. No, for sure. I'm just saying the dynamic between the two of them. Just think about it, right? Mm -hmm. One gets into a relationship with a billionaire. Not just a billionaire. He's a music mogul. Freaky ass nigga. Freak ass music mogul. She says she like golden showers. She did, and then she tried to she tried to backpedal. Back she said she yeah. like she tried to backtrack on a lot of the things that she I'm said sure. over the years that was caught in 4K. No, for sure. You like to get pissed on. It's cool. <laughs> and naturally, your lifestyle is gonna change when you fucking with a billionaire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here come the other party, which is a JT. I'm sure she has money. I'm sure QC provided for her. You know, I'm sure she wasn't popped. But in terms of wants, needs, and goals, I'm sure they change when you fucking with a billionaire. And Lil Uzi got some money. He got mm -hmm. some paper. But it, it wasn't what Diddy had. Yeah. And I say had because I'm sure he's lost a bunch since, you know, all of the allegations. Like her, like her palate that, changed. Yeah. For real. Yeah, like that power dynamic, that power change. Exactly. Yeah. No, 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 palate. Like, like the, things that she was, the things that she was used to have now been altered because of what she's been exposed to with Diddy. Right. Yeah. And, and the level of it, right? Like, right. they all rich. They all got money. Billionaire money, multi-million dollar money is different. And yeah. your wants could literally change. And not just money, it's also yeah. power and influence. Mm -hmm. Right? Like... Even if, if Diddy were to go broke, he will never lose his power or yeah, he his lost influence. That shit. He lost that shit. He might lose yeah, he lost his power shit. financially, yeah. but his name will continue the whole way. And you I, don't believe that. that I, I do. <laughs> no, I don't. believe that with a lot of these you famous guys. Like, Diddy could sell something right now with his name on it? No. With his name on it? No. That's that power. But though. who he is, you don't think there's still people today that's fearful of Diddy? No. I think so. You don't think anybody today is fearful of Diddy? Not anymore. I, I, think before, I, think I think before I think so. I think before the Cassie footage, mm. yes. After the Cassie footage, no, I don't think so. He's, I think people have finally found a moment that they could sit on and be like, you see, he's a terrible person. Mm -hmm. I feel confident enough now <laughs> on expressing and opening up about the shit I went through because you guys saw something so tumultuous. But before they actually saw mm -hmm. the proof of him being violent, of him being an ill person, I'm with you. Now, nah. Think about all the people, right? So we got to uh, see that video of him and Cassie, that exchange. We saw that on camera, right? Mm -hmm. Think about all of the people outside of Cassie who may have saw that side of him, the violent side of him, the angry, the aggressive. But it wasn't They're public. Still always, I know. It doesn't have to be public it for you to still to instill fear no, in somebody. No, it has There's to be. There's still, because at the end of the day, we know how when, when you reach a certain level of status, when you hit a certain benchmark, when it comes to the clubs that you're allowed in, once you reach a certain level, in, 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 in all things in life, mm -hmm. you find peers. You find people who have common interests. 
Diddy has allegedly been a menace, a fucking horrible person for years. But no one saw it. No, no one said anything. No, no, Everybody no. saw no, it. No, 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 no. Because yeah, no, now, two different things. No, I, I don't believe so. Right, I think listen. so many people have seen certain things. We hear like the Jaguar rights. We hear even somebody like a Dame Dash to Jay-Z. We hear so many different stories about some of these elitists some of the elite in our industry mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. but nobody feels comfortable or confident to talk on it until the door is open the door is open on diddy right now mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean it doesn't happen and it doesn't mean that during your run of terror that you didn't instill fear on certain people so it, i do believe people are still fearful of diddy even if he's vulnerable right now it being public is the caveat that people will use as a shield all right, because you're right. For years, people have had stories or known. But if the majority doesn't know mm -hmm. and isn't aware, you can keep it behind the shadows as long yeah. as you want. As a matter of fact, the Jaguar rights of the world, they mm -hmm. call conspiracy theorists for years. Whistleblowers. Sure. They call, whistle, right, the yeah. security Aubrey guard. Aubrey O'Day. Aubrey yeah. O'Day, the security guard who does all the interviews and all the dialogue. Gene, Gene Dill. Yeah. These are people who have been speaking out on this matter and knew but no one gave a fuck. And when it became public, the uh, rest of the world gave a fuck, which now means, hey, if you have a story on Diddy, whether it not even be true or not, mm -hmm. we're going to add credence to what you're saying. Yeah, like, like where there's smoke, there's fire. Which would take away that fear because the real fear is it trying to express something that occurred in your life, but no one believes you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Once we saw the Cassie video, people were able to see the lengths he could take. And it. remember, too, he um, was denying it, denying everything yeah. that, that Cassie wrote in the, um, in the affidavit. And then when the video came out, he said, you know what, I was, I was messed up. And, you know, he started giving his reasons as to why that was. That video being released stripped him of his power. Yeah. And also, sure. like, the fact that it was public, um, another layer to it is, like, even if people do want to support him, you can't because of the public shame. Mm. So, like, even if he does have supporters or people who are still loyal to him, I don't think they would dare, like, mm. stand on a pedestal right now to uh, defend Diddy. Can I, can I speak to his fear really quick? Mm -hmm. So, as y'all know, I, I have no problem. I know a lot of people are indifferent when it comes to Vlad, DJ Vlad. Um, I think he serves a really great purpose in this space. I don't agree with everything that he's done, but I don't agree with a lot of things that a lot of people have done. But when it comes to Vlad, right? Um... He offers the option for you to pay for his interviews in full before they get released on his YouTube page. He recently did an interview with Elliot Wilson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Big Ellie. Big, big, big Ellie. Shout out to Elliot Wilson. All right. Um, Vlad and Elliot, they sat down. They did an interview for, I want to say maybe like two hours, close to two hours, something like that. Maybe a little bit over two hours. And at the very end of the interview... Vlad asked the question that I haven't seen Elliot been asked as of yet, which is, hey, there was a story at one time where your wife and Diddy crossed paths, right? Elliot's wife worked at a magazine uh, back in the 90s. This was before Elliot was married, right? And again, all of this is explained in that interview. I watched the interview in full because I paid for the service to kind of see all of these interviews. You pay for the Vlad, huh? Yeah, I have no problem paying no, $4.99. Fuck you, fuck you, God damn. God damn. I, I have no problem. I'm nah, fucking with you. Fuck you. Because it, it, I have again, no problem with Vlad. We, we talked about my interest and when it comes to like music yeah. and other things, yeah. I like to consume my content in full. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one of the things or one of the benefits is seeing these interviews in full. I got to see Elliot Wilson's life story on this Vlad interview. Yeah. At the very end of this interview, Vlad asked um, Elliot about, hey, so your wife, her and Diddy had an exchange where Diddy had threatened your wife uh, because of a music cover after Biggie died. And whatever the context was, I want y'all to all do your own research because I, I don't want to fuck. Uh, Danielle Smith, she's like a legendary journalist. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Danielle okay. Smith. So I've heard of that story, but I didn't realize that was um, Elliot's wife. Yeah. Well, yeah. long story short, yeah. um, she was allegedly threatened by Diddy. Vlad asked Elliot, mm -hmm. he, he pretty much pressed him like, hey, so like, what about the story? What happened? I'm not going to say Elliot is afraid of Diddy by not answering because I can understand it's a sensitive situation. You know what I'm saying? It happened before he got married. That's not my story to tell. But it's been a very long time from that point 
till today where I think with the platform that Elliot has had, maybe it could have been broached. Maybe that conversation could have been broached. But again, I'm not going to judge nobody because that that's his wife, that's his woman, and it happened before him. Like Nobody can truly judge Elliot on what he would do if they were in that situation. Sure. So I'm going to make sure I tread lightly when I talk about that. Yeah. But I will say when Vlad asked him about the Diddy situation and his wife, there was a certain level of being uncomfortable when answering. If anything, yeah. though, if he didn't really disclose or give it up, I think he's just protecting his wife. Right? For sure. He, no, for, yeah. I'm, and I'm with no, you no, with that. I, I know, I'm with I know. you on that. He's the more visible one of the two in the media space. Mm -hmm. So I know when he has his own battles, he'll take them head on. Boom, 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 boom. I'm sure with his wife involved. That's why I don't want to exactly mimic that situation for this conversation we're having mm -hmm. because there's another party involved. For sure. And you want to make sure you don't overspeak for that party or mm -hmm. what that party even feels comfortable disclosing. Like you said, it's been over 20 years and we didn't really hear about it. So I'm sure the two of them don't really even want to discuss but, it. You know, Going back to my original question, which is the respect or the fear of Diddy, mm -hmm. I think his name still holds weight where people may not feel fully comfortable to have certain conversations because of his name. Like they say the, no Diddy say on. The Kate but yeah, that's the kids on in, the internet. You have the his, rappers you have his, what, what rapper have said that? Rappers are saying who? I can't any think of them right now. Any rapper, that. especially anybody from that era till now, nobody is saying that. Niggas is we saying haven't no seen Diddy. anybody publicly shame Diddy except for maybe two media personalities. But when it comes to peers, when it comes to rap moguls, his peers, Dr. Dre. Let me ask you a question. Birdman. What else is there who, to be, be, you know, to, to uh, be scared over? At this very it's, moment. I don't want to say scared, but there's a certain <laughs> there respect to be fearful of? that his name still carries in this industry. I think also to his, his associations and, you know, the people that he's connected to that most people don't know who also have power and um, influence in different areas and in the work in the media space. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think like it's not so much like, oh, Diddy, I'm like scared of him doing something to me. I think it's like his influence and associations run so deep yeah. and the music industry knows that. And that is where I agree with Savon. Like, yo, people are still feeling that. And that will get, well, that will take years to eradicate because it's just been like this for like four decades. I implore you guys to turn off your fear if you have it. And I'm I'm very sure the two of my co-hosts are very right in what they're saying. We watched him publicly abuse Cassie. Facts. Yeah. What? Why would I have no fear in my body? I'm not us. I'm not no, speaking no, 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 for us. I'm just speaking. We don't come from that ever. I, I'm just honestly, speaking. Rhetorical. I don't think anybody's talking about this the way that we talk about it outside sure. of maybe act. But my thing is though. What real say or pull does he still have in certain rooms and certain buildings when they don't even want to be next to that? No, nobody wants to be next to Diddy. Revolt don't even want to be next to Diddy right now. I think it's name value. I think <laughs> name it's, value it's name equity. Yes, for sure. Salute. Think about all of the people like the Harvey <laughs> Weinsteins, bro. There's still people who have not spoken out against. There were people that were in the courtroom speaking in 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 a positive manner for Harvey Weinstein. When there was a plethora, dozens on yeah. dozens of women saying their encounters, there was still certain actors, certain producers, certain directors. His, but I expect that his friends spoke to show up for him. You get what I'm saying? But so, I expect his but friends again, to show up. But again, that's that. That's respect. That's a certain nah. respect. Even after you see, hear, or know if, what happens, I think some of these guys they had they've built so much equity in their positions that this is what you get. I believe what you're saying. If anything, I'm just a bit confused by it. Because there are certain things, certain events that transpire and occur where whatever respect mm -hmm. you had for a person should go right out the fucking window and I, and, and after I, you see them involved in certain things. I hate to be this guy. <laughs> I, I really do hate to be this guy. Okay. But like, where's Hove? No, nah, I mean, Hove is doing exactly what he's always done. Mind his business and stay out of the way. <laughs> and That's get, all we've ever known him to do. I get that. Uh, yeah. I understand that. Yeah. But- when it comes to Diddy, mm -hmm, right, and mm -hmm. it comes to, they and I guess, and I guess at this point, because there's video footage, so I don't expect anybody, especially like a Jay-Z, somebody of that stature, somebody of that business acumen to come out and defend Diddy. But when I say where's Hove, it's a blanketed statement. It's an umbrella statement where, where is anyone, there is, there has been nobody that has spoken in a positive manner when it comes to Diddy. And I think it's either out of one respect or it's out of one fear because there's also an alternate reality. I know everybody gets caught up in, you know, a lot of people are progressive. And when you see somebody get harmed, especially on video in that manner, you, your, your heart, there's no way that you don't feel that and there's no way that you don't support Cassie. 
But there's also a lot of people who are of the belief that Diddy can come out on top. I know people who support you. fucking R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. I know people that support Harvey Weinstein. I know people that support murder, like serial killers. You want to know what it is, Savon Reggie? You get what I'm saying? Part of Diddy's allure, part of Diddy's image was... Of course, the party lifestyle, everybody's going to have a good time. But most importantly, everybody loves me. Mm -hmm. He changed his whole name to love. Mm -hmm. Love, love, love. That was a driving force into why people highly revered him, why people put the respect to him, why they left some decisions to him. Mm -hmm. I think now that that's been stripped, I'm sure, you know, you still have your, your name cachet. Absolutely. Like P. Diddy is still going to be P. Diddy. We know the records he's worked on. We know the artists he's brought up. We know that. That's never going to change. Facts. I just think it's a little bit separate now, you know, j just at the current moment. We'll now. see. Yeah, I, and we will and, see. And I'm and, and, yeah. and I'm not knocking you because I know there's and a, I'm not knocking a you guys audience either. of people that that definitely, yeah. um, you know, echo your sentiment. Absolutely. And same but for you. Again, I, I think there's there's always a what if. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm, there's mm -hmm. always a what if. There's a lot of people who support people who have been found guilty in a Absolutely. court of law. But are those people in power? That, that's some, my thing. some of them are some, but some the people in power want to stay in power. You said where's Ho, and I'm not mentioning Ho, but I will say people that want to stay in power get far away from the fire. For sure, yeah, for sure. Mm, I don't know because I think people <laughs> like the higher ups. I feel like they protect each other to an extent. And that's what they I'm don't saying. like abandon. I'm glad you they said that. Either way, it could they could abandon them or they could be like, no, we us billionaires protect each other. They protect each other until they can't. Mm -hmm. And I, and I unfortunately I think Diddy has crossed the line where, no, where it's it's pretty difficult to stand behind that. Um, speak, was talking about uh, speaking of standing in lines, I know folks is going to do that for the Fugees tour, but it got canceled. What a mm. transition! Hello, it's need to know podcast. What you need to know? What you need to know? Speaking need to of know standing podcast. in lines, <laughs> speaking of standing in lines, that's what they were supposed to do at they that Fugees tour. Standing in them lines. They go, and you know the jokes have always been written on the wall because mm -hmm. Lauren Hill has a history for being. Late to her shows, mm -hmm. or maybe she might not arrive. Or canceling them very, very, very last minute. Very last minute. A Jersey queen. Jersey queen. Big Jersey queen. Hello. Reggie, that's your twin. Yes. Twin. <laughs> that's not your twin. That's her twin. Because Reggie is nothing like that. I'm early Reggie as fuck. Reggie is the consummate professional. No, she's professional. a professional. Thank Lauren Hill's you. a professional too. Don't do that. She's <laughs> no, a she's not. She's a, she's a professional nothing, singer. Nothing, and in, 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 in maybe I want to give a little bit of grace yeah. before I like talk shit. Yeah. All right? Maybe there's a lot of pressure that comes with being Lauren Hill oh. that we can't see that has I love this. dictated her way in moving since the heights of her success of going crazy at the Grammys and whatever mm -hmm. year that was and, and being one of the most influential, uh, uh, most successful female artists, not just rap artists, but female artists of artists. all time. Mm -hmm. There's a different level that we will never understand, but... With that being said, you signed up for this. You owe your fans. You owe people, hardworking people that pay mm -hmm. to see you. You owe them something, whether you feel like it or not. And I know she gets on stage and I know she says things like, oh, it's a privilege. Y'all are lucky that I even showed up. Yeah. She says. It's a privilege. She comes late. It's a privilege, nigga. And says, you're lucky that I even came. That's a fact. I, it's not a fact. <laughs> I'm the prize. That's what it's, you said, right? I, she's Ain't not, that what you said? I didn't say that. You didn't say that. You did say that. that. You said you were the prize, prize at the beginning of the episode. Those words have never come out of my mouth. Rewind it right now, what? motherfucker. I, no, no, I said I I'm the prize. I never said I'm being I was gaslit. The prize. No, no, I, I think he's. That. I think he said I'm the gift. Thank you. Oh, thank you. But oh, Savon, that's, that's, that's the same thing. Same thing. You're the gift because I would never be the prize. All right, well, she the gift. But with that being said, she's like, y'all didn't pay to come here. What you mean? Y'all don't pay to fucking hang out with me. That would be sad. Why would we do that? That's called the mixer. <laughs> no, I'm saying us. Oh, you're 17, Alex, man. Alex. Yeah, I pull up, you But no, anyway, yeah. with, with, with the Lauren Hill, it's just like, this is a pattern. This is what she does. She, she books a show. I don't want to put flakes on the show. Like, that's corny. It's, 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 it's not it. And it's also, the it. fans yeah. that have been riding for her, like giving her grace throughout, because she's been doing this for a decade. Like, it's documented. She has a track record. Even the fans that ride for her and, like, no, Lauren, like, we get it. Like, we, we'll always love you. I've seen this time. Like the the tour cancellation, I've seen a lot of people who are riding for her like flip 
like flip on her now. Be like, you know what? We're officially sick of this. It's corny. It's unprofessional. But I don't want to put the full blame on her, y'all. This is this was scheduled as a Fugees tour. Let me read this. Lauren Hill and the Fugees 2024 tour is quietly canceled three days before the first date. A U.S. tour by Lauren Hill and the Fugees set for late summer and fall has been canceled with dates removed from Ticketmaster. Ticket holders receiving notices about receiving run refunds late on Tuesday. Now, if this is a Lauren Hill show, it was we were only expected to see Lauren Hill. I get what you guys are saying. A lot of people have echoed the same sentiments you guys have said. Hey, we're big fans of her, but when it's time to perform, it's something else. We briefly spoke about the dynamic in groups when we were just talking about the City Girls, uh, JT and Young Miami. I'm sure this relationship between the three of them is strained. Praz, Wyclef, and herself. So much so that Praz released a diss track today. <laughs> Nigga, if you stop <laughs> showing up to the pod, I'm going to diss you too. <laughs> but Honestly, you, if, you, but who, but who, if you just but, stop but showing up, we don't even know that was the case. If you're affecting my bottom line, but we don't even know if that was the you case. you are the draw, no, I do know. You know what I no, do know? Don't. I know that Lauren Hill is the draw <laughs> yeah. for the Fugees. Okay. That's what I know. Okay, That's okay. what I know as a fan. I know that Wyclef is super talented. He may be the most super musical. What? Super talented. I know. I said that. Yeah, I said so. he may be the most super talented. Like, but Big Zo. Do you remember? First, Big Zo. Do, I get it. You, you rapped with Wyclef in a fucking record label office. Do we remember how close Wyclef and Lauren Hill were? I, of course I do. There was rumors. Okay. There was rumors. Okay. What's the rumors? You know the so rumors? So imagine. Talk I'm, about the rumors. Uh, hey, I don't know about the rumors, but it was what, this is what I will say. Now nah, the rumors said they imagine, was fucking. Imagine. Say the rumors. Imagine having relations. <laughs> Big fuck. Big fucky. fucky Big fucky, fucky fucky. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. The rumor, I can I see it. They look like All a I'm saying is, okay. imagine if you in a group fucking and two people start rumping. I'm sure that can create different dynamics between the three y'all as the years go by. But she does that and shit absolutely. solo. So but, don't but, blame but, it on White Club's but, presence. But, but you more. do that with or without me. Wait, are you saying that's why, pro like, that's, what are you saying? That's what, what I'm saying is, the relationship between the three of them, I think, is strained. Yeah. Okay. So in order for them, I get it. She's canceled her personal tours before, right? But in order for the three of them to go on a tour, for the most part, you guys will need to be on the same page. So don't agree to it. But no, I mean, so a lot don't of people- agree to it. But it's not just her. Like, a lot of people wanted to do it. I'm sure she was offered it over the years, and she declined. But they agreed right? this time. But, so don't agree to it. But, but my thing you is, made though, a commitment. We're you sold tickets. I don't like that we're speaking as if we know she's the reason. I don't like that. I don't think that's correct. We, we truly don't know. I think <laughs> what you put out, your reputation matters, right? Okay, yeah. What people say about you, different. what you what you do on it. Like, Alex, if you came into the studio every single day, mm -hmm. every single time, or uh, let's say eight out of ten times, you came in here with one shoe on. Mm hmm I'm going to expect you to walk into the studio with one shoe on because you did that eight out of 10 times. Now, if we go on a, a shoot for Nike and it's an obligation for you to come with two shoes on mm -hmm. and you come with one fucking shoe on, mm -hmm. I'm already programmed of knowing, oh, this is what he does. This is who he is. This is the MO. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be surprised but, but when gonna... you are the culprit or when people are looking at you for not fulfilling your obligation to this commitment. But are we forgetting about Praz's charges? Do we for, for, do we do we remember that? He was that? ratting. He was ratting. Nigga snitch. It's hip hop. Okay, but That's he what still these niggas do. Can I finish? He's so... <laughs> <laughs> this nigga be getting passionate, yo. He's still <laughs> awaiting trial. Let me read this really He need the money for the lawyer. I, that's what I'm saying. I think we forget. So there's so much more uh, things that could be involved here. I'll, let me read this real quick. Just for people that need a refresher on what happened to Praz as of recently. Uh, charges stem from Michael's relationship with a Malaysian businessman, Joe Lowe, who spent lavishly on an extravagant lifestyle with famous friends. Lau was charged alongside Michael, who was Praz, of course, but has yet to be arrested. He is considered to be an international fugitive. Lowe is separately being accused of having of embezzling billions by a company called 1MDB. Now, this is the part you guys really care about. Mm -hmm. Praz told jurors that he accepted $20 million in 2012 from Lau, who wanted his photo taken from President Barack Obama, but that large amounts were never intended as illegal foreign campaign contributions as for a payment. Long story short, Praz was a China agent. He was, he was an agent for China. And guess Damn. what? He still got booked for a tour that was committed by three motherfuckers. That's my and point, And everybody's though. looking at Lauryn Hill because her track record says 
you failed us. I mean, that's how maybe you're looking at it. I'm looking at it as, yo, there can be a plethora of factors. It could be. Mm-hmm. It could be. I mean, especially when you got the law involved. Yeah. It could be. Bro, you what, bro? This is the feds we talking right now, bro. This is not no yo, homie, robbed a little fifty k from boy. You shouldn't. This is big but, time. All right. If you big knew that, shit. if you knew that, right. do you not think Wyclef and Lauren Hill knew that? Yeah, but what, okay. What do you, so what do you if mean they that? knew that too, mm-hmm. and all three of them said, "Hey, guys, we're mm-hmm. still gonna go on this tour together." Mm-hmm. I understand what you're going through. I know your reputation. Mm-hmm. I know where we are. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're still going to put. Tickets on sale for people to buy. Who are we blaming here? I don't, I'm not blaming. I no, you are. You were blaming. Lauren. Is blaming somebody. No, you were but blaming. Also, no, 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 no. I'm not allowed to do that. You were just blaming Lauren. When, when I, I look presented the... Proz, and then you were like, oh well. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. You know what? Fuck it. Yes, I am blaming Lauren because Stand of her track. Her track okay, record. So I think like okay, I get Alex saying like okay, there's a million things that yeah. could have led to the tour cancellation, but I think like we can have an opinion of like what we think happened because none of us do. But in my opinion, I do think that people's like expectation of what Lauren Hill was probably going to do for these shows that had a big hit in ticket sales. That's what I do think happened. But she I'm, has but I'm the hearing, leverage. But I'm hearing Lauren. We know that. But I'm hearing Lauren Hill actually still wanted to perform certain shows yeah. and that the two of them denied it. You can't just say like, I want to do talking certain about? shows. Like that's her whole No, MO. no, no. Whoa, no, no. You're not, can I, not let me finish, bro. Let me finish. Can I finish, bro? <laughs> I like that he excited though. He didn't get in. Let me fin- you even let me finish with what I'm saying. <laughs> After the cancellation, Lauren Hill was still open to perform in certain shows. So what I'm saying is the trio came to the decision that was gonna be canceled, it is what it is, and she still wanted to rock some shows. So when I hear that, I go, oh, okay, wait, no, maybe it wasn't just completely you. You know what that says to me? What does it say? It says that Lauren Hill knows she has the leverage. So if she says, I want to do <laughs> a show in <laughs> if I want to do a show in LA, if yeah. I want to do a show in Miami, I want to do a show in New York, I'm still open to it. But fuck everything else. Because people are here to see me. That Lauren, everybody knows that Lauren Hill is the driving force behind the Fugees. She knows it. Wyclef knows it. Proz knows it. So Proz should have dropped the diss track? I'm not saying he should have dropped the diss track. If you want to play it, go ahead and play it. But what I'm saying is she knows her position and her status, bro. Time's up. Time's up, nigga. Shut up. <laughs> Life a game of chess. Best protect your necks. Aiming guns and all your picks. You don't pose a threat. Still waiting for me to lose. Don't hold your breath. They took a bite out of Zambezi. I control the rest. Now, for the folks listening, you might be a little confused, but yes, this is Proz from the Fugees directing a diss track at Lauren Hill. I'll continue. Sorry. <laughs> Don't blame me, blame her. She made the mess. Oh, Not shit. Another fucking penny's what I told Clef. Trotting the globe with the bros playing dominoes. We get it done where I'm from. It's more cons than pros. Obama name and the discoveries had to plead the fifth. Got you see? You snitching. Fuck, I need a therapist. The DOJ was a walk in the park compared to this. Damn. You want to hit the winning shot? It's all in the wrist. But here's the kicker. We bet they differ. These city slickers and glass slippers. I laugh with you. Pour out some liquor. Shit, I'm done trying to spar with ya. Me and I be having fun. This a bar misfer. Live life, fuck it. This my manifesto. Riding with my Amazon. Feel like Jeff Bezos. Nah, I knew he was gonna say that. Tuck it. I'm trying to world cup it. Acquire money in the mattress. Shit, I barely touch it. Time to rock out. Ring the mop out. Niggas tend to lock out. When I pop out, not bad for a college dropout. Quite a scab. This vintage paddock's my favorite girl. I'm just here for the culture. I ain't trying to ruin the world. I had to raise myself. Papa was a rolling stone. Still here to beat now, beating through my head. On this diss track, to y'all's point. Proz does insinuate that. Yo, it's her fault. Yeah, he was like, don't bl- blame me, blame her. She created the mess. Bl- yeah. So if it was not mm-hmm. her fault, because mm-hmm. the way that, obviously, I want to reiterate, like, I don't know what happened. and But, like, the way that I am assuming this happened is down. like, oh, Lauren Hill, her reputation caused low ticket sales, and that's why they had to cancel the show. That's a very oversimplified version. And then Proz is like, um, airing his grievances and being like, yeah, like finally you guys are seeing that her reputation is kind of like ruining everything. And so if that wasn't the case, why is he dropping a diss track? Like if it was also his fault, shouldn't he like stay quiet? If, no accountability. So, no a, accountability. A bro. year ago, oh, okay. a year ago, I got invited to a Lauren Hill concert. Did it, did it, did it happen? It didn't happen. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't end up going, but I did get invited. 
And the person that invited me, she was very, very adamant about going to see Lauren Hill, her queen. Everybody still fucking loves Lauren Hill. And I think she deserves it because I think the music that she put together um, is it, it, fucking album timeless. Is a yeah, that album is a classic. It's a masterpiece. Like, it's a masterpiece. It, it truly is. Front to back, back to front. The definition of a masterpiece. So anybody sure. who still feels connected to supporting her, I understand. Yeah. So when I was presented with the opportunity to go see Lauren Hill in the bar, at the Barclay Center in Brooklyn, I, I declined it. And it wasn't because I'm not a fan of her music. And it's not because I don't believe in her talent. And it's not because I don't want to support her. It's simply because of her reputation. And I text that person who invited me. I told her like, hey, um, so this is what I don't know if you know. But this is what Lauren Hill does when she books shows. <laughs> you this wasn't him? the Fugees. This was just, just Lauren Hill. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. You can look it up. It's on Google. She performed about a year ago, October ish, what November ish. She was performing and she showed up to that event. Thank God. See, she popped oh, up. She popped up. She, popped she did. Up. She was late. All right, but, but she went. Most artists be late. I've been to a bunch of concerts. Yes, that most is, artists be late. Let's that, keep it a bean. No, that's y'all. the standard when it comes to artists in general. Artists are always <laughs> late. You. Entertainers are always late. Yeah, yeah. right. Does she, have an, does she have an opener? Or but was it just... she is deliberately smacking her fans in the face the way that she shows up for them because she doesn't show up for them. And so, just on that fact alone, I said I can't commit to going. I don't want to even that. give her my money. I'm not gonna go. I just listen to her slaps. Her slaps probably sound better on iTunes than it does in person anyway. That's not that's true. That's a wild that take. Is, that is of course it sounds better live. Not true. No, it's not. This, of is, this is a woman that plays instruments. This is a woman that please, performs please, please. every five Same years it doesn't and matter. doesn't put out music. I don't know how her voice Same sounds more. in person. Lauren Hill left the music industry not because of talent or ability. I didn't say that. No, I'm, but it, I'm just want you. I just want to at, highlight this mm-hmm. as you're saying, hey, it might not be that good in it person. It was never about her ability mm-hmm. or what she could do live. If anything, she's one of those. This is this is she was the original no auto tune. No, like I, um, I, her, I yeah. if, if her unplugged albums are like yes, way more popular. I was just about to get into that. that. Yeah. Thank you. Her unplugged albums with a bare guitar, bro. Go tap in. If you it's don't, not a, it's not a talent thing. If you don't use it. You lose it. Who says she doesn't use it? She Maybe don't we use just it, don't clearly. see it. Maybe we, we just we don't, don't see it. Because she don't give it. That, that doesn't mean it's not a current. <laughs> How the fuck? Yeah, we don't see it because she don't give it. Her son, YG Marley. Shout out to him. Is very musically inclined. I'm sure growing up, he saw his mother performing, doing, uh, uh, singing, creating music, even if we didn't see it. I'm not Which means that. she's always been practicing. That's no. my whole point. You create a reputation. <laughs> and, I'm not talking about the reputation. I'm, I'm talking about the ability. We're talk- uh, and, and, uh, and, yeah, again, yeah, I'm talking about the ability. Her ability, <laughs> I will take it on record that she recorded in her prime, then I will take a chance on if she's going to show up or not. That's me. I'll give it to you. Okay. S- salute. I got no issue with right, that. Cool. Now, we were supposed to meet the Fugees. I ain't tell you. Wait, huh? what? Huh? Us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we you were. met one third. Oh yeah, I battle rap Wyclef. I still on my second round. What's up? Come I'm, see me. Need to I'm know related to Wyclef. Yeah, I'm oh related. Pierre always oh, does this. Yeah. Pierre, no, oh, you're not. I'm bro. related to every Haitian on the planet, bro. That's not how it works. You ever had sex with a Haitian? That's not how it works. Nah, that's only Alex. Alex is Haitian by so, by penetration. Why are you wearing a what? business like <laughs> this? Wait, wait, nah, wait. Alex said he's Haitian by penetration. Remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, that's so true. yeah, that's nah, nah, nah. I remember, but. Were and uh, what was I saying? We were supposed to meet the Fugees. <laughs> hold on, we, okay, I gotta hold on. Is it the Fugees or the Fugees? Because you, you keep saying it's Fugees, Fugees. Uh, and you I got, think it's Fugees. Fugees. It's Fugees. It's definitely bro. Fugees. I'm sorry. Every time you say it, I, <laughs> like, I say it, I like chuckle. That's just how I say okay, it. I'm okay. sorry. It's definitely the Fugees. But say it however you want to say it. Fugees. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Fugees. Fugees. We're supposed to meet them. I was on my way to work one day, and I do enjoy my commutes. I work in Times Square, New York City. For those of you that don't know, complex. <laughs> Something like Reggie's not too uh, far from me. Brian Park gang. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nine to five gang for real. And on my commutes, I told you I run into a bunch of listeners or people who are just familiar with us. And I'm always got to get in the gangster mode first. Like I tense up. Like who are you? Like what's up, nigga? Where I know you from. <laughs> oh no, I'm a need to know fan. Oh hey, how you doing? I'm Alex. <laughs> you feel me? I just, I just you know, calm down a little bit. And on one of my <laughs> commutes, I ran into a dude, and he was staring at me. From across the street, you know how you got to wait for the 10, 9, yeah. 8, 7. Like, it's counting down for you to cross. Mm-hmm. And he crosses, but he looking at me as he crossing. So I start running. I start, let me get away from this nigga. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, a bad, that's a bad place to try to, like, approach someone right in the middle yeah, of the street. In the middle of the street. I'm yeah, like, Because nah, there's so much going on in New York. There's too you know? much going on. And, and, you know, not that I'm scared, but 
I don't want to turn into another version of myself. <laughs> so I continue walking, and mind you, I walk two more blocks, and the same dude that I saw, he tapped me in the shoulder. He's like, hey, what's up, man? I'm like, oh shit, this nigga's sweating. <laughs> it looked like he was it looked like he was sprinting to catch Sweaty up with me. Sweaty niggas just touching you. Nah, yeah. Unfortunate. It is okay. hot outside, though. It's unfortunate. Nah, I never had a sweaty man touch me like that. You okay. have. You have, bro. Why you softening your At voice? At a mixer. Like yeah, you see how? Yeah, yeah. yeah. At the mixer, they're going to be right, in there. Right, yeah. Sweaty man, man. Salute to the listeners that sweat. For sure. You sweat. Yeah, I do. You profusely. I don't touch you when I sweat. Yeah, you do. All the daps in the world. Anyway, <laughs> he's sweating. He's like, hey, man, you know, the Fugees. They're working on an event and I want, you know, the three of you guys, you guys can be involved some way, somehow. You know, I'll set everything up. Damn. I'm like, oh, word. I looked at him and I'm not going to lie to y'all. I said, is it happening? <laughs> I ain't going to sit here in front. Okay, that's what I we're saying. Say true. But I just don't want to put the blame completely on her. I understand we why. Don't I, get that. I, I understand agree why. To that too. That's I all can, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can understand as to your, you guys' plights. Like, it's her. She's had a history of it. I get it. And this... There is a dynamic between three members, a 20, 30 year span. I, I'm with you. Right? The, the relationships you. you have between these yeah. three people. Yeah. A lot can occur as to be, you know, why as to, all right, one person might feel like this person's a diva. But that's why one person might feel like this one is closer to that one. This person might feel like, oh, none of us, none of them like me. There could be a plethora <laughs> of reasons why in a group. Imagine I was like, <laughs> you guys don't like me. You know what I'm saying? You never know. But this is you why you know. gotta learn from your past. That's, yeah. None of us can start fucking. Well, that's too late. That would be. No, no, he's that, would, about, that would huh? end. Uh, I'm saying uh, that oh, would oh, end the podcast. He's about amongst the. Amongst, oh, amongst us. Yeah, what the fuck, that nigga? Would end no. The podcast. I, that's what I'm saying. But they, we know that already. They didn't. That's I. We. You know why we know that? Because the Fuji's went through it. So we course, learned. That's what I'm saying. Like there's progression. There's education. Yeah. Now let me ask Back you a question. Back then there was just an attraction. When you have some like they you do, don't. You know what? Could you do I'm, a tour with your ex? What happened? Could you do a tour with your ex? <laughs> for, could you do a tour with your ex for money? I love when that happens when one of you guys asks me and you're like, wait, what? Wait, what? Now, mind you, Savon, there's money on the line. You no, like money. Hold on, hold on. No, okay. I'm we're, we're, we're all agreeing. Like, I don't can like you, it that much. Do you want to do a tour with your ex? And we're like, no. Hold so up. then, what I agree with Savon saying, then why did you agree to it? But and it then, wasn't no, just and they, her. They canceled it mm -hmm. uh, like two days before the first show. Like, why did you do but it? You said the main word. You said, but Reggie said the main word, they. I'm cool. No, it's not they. It's That's the, the public statement, oh they. It only takes one person. I ain't going to front long here. It's getting hard to defend you, It just takes one person to cancel it. Like, my they. I'm to running be out of in this bitch. That's all I'm saying, The Laura Hill Glock starting but to run out. It's a group. If huh. we say, hey, we hey, ignore the Need to Know Podcast yeah. Mixer, and Alex Shit. is not coming, hmm? that is not a they thing. What time are you going to show up to our mixer? 8 o'clock. 8.30. And when the fuck do we start? Save on this hour party. Nah, I'm not when going. the mixer start, though? Tell, tell the people when the mixer start. It start at 7 p.m. Make sure y'all get there. The open bar is from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so excited. I can't wait either. But I will not be showing up to our mixer until 8 o'clock, 8.30. You know what? Let's just let him be him. But also, <laughs> but also yeah. with this conversation, like it's like, guys, like we know it's a nuanced situation. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, I'm, me and Savon are kind of saying Lauren Hill is most likely the majority of the reason why it happened. But also I agree with Alex. It's like there's probably a lot of other factors. I feel like that's a fair answer. Well, I get it because Joaquin Phoenix... Sometimes you just gotta say I ain't doing that shit. You heard about Joaquin? <laughs> Shout out to the Joker. What he doing? Joker part two is coming out. I'm very interested in this story. Joaquin Phoenix. First off, <laughs> that is the most blackest name, blackest white. Like Joaquin. <laughs> Wait, is that I don't a little Latino? No, it's I don't it's know. Not. That nigga is Latino. It doesn't. Joaquin. Joaquin, 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 Joaquin Phoenix. I, I don't. I don't know. I used to work for Joaquin. You know what, Pierre? If you don't mind looking up, because yeah. Jamie Foxx's real name is not Jamie Foxx. Oh my God! It's Eric Bishop. I ain't gonna lie. When I found that out, I was like, "You get what I'm saying?" So maybe Joaquin Phoenix is like his stage name to appear to be universal because that's what Jamie Foxx did. That's Jamie Foxx said, "I want a name that's gonna be universal." So I'm gonna change my name from Eric to Jamie because it's. I was about to say it's bisexual. It's unisex. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, what is my sexual? What? No. <laughs> so Jamie Foxx, oh, shit. a part of his marketing and like <laughs> him being who he is, uh -huh. he changed his name from Eric to Jamie because it's bisexual. <laughs> 
it's not that. No, you said that was no, a mistake. Unisex. No, it's unisex. It's unisex, <laughs> nigga. It's unisex. You know what I mean? Well, Jamie, Jamie's a, Jamie is a good bisexual name as well. So. It, it's oh, unisex. So you're not wrong. No, Jamie's unisex. Oh, the Spanish version of Herman is Joaquin. Herman? Yeah, you never met a Herman? I, I know what well, Herman. Herman? Herman. Wait, I've never, I've never heard that name. Man. I worked with a Honduran before. This is my good brother, Herman. I dated one. <laughs> Herman? So what you want to say, nigga? The you fuck? dated a Herman? You trying to up it? Yeah, I'm trying to up it, nigga. You should know how to say Herman then. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't meet that, yeah, that I nigga. I met that nigga. Me. Honduran. Honduran. Herman. You black like me. And Joaquin. Yeah, yeah them, you know. them niggas be dark. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Joaquin <laughs> is for real? That's what, Ke- that's what Karen just said. The, the that's German like name. Willie and Billy. <laughs> You know, Willie and Billy mean the same thing. It's like Dick and Richard. I was just thinking of what that was. <laughs> Why do they call him Dick? Why do they call Hank Charles. Henry? I hate these. Joe Man. Because I get so irritated. I'm like, why? <laughs> Who decided this? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, Imagine that's... having sex, yeah. getting somebody pregnant. That person has a pregnancy for nine months. The baby is born. You look at the baby and said, that nigga's name is Hank. Yo, I think of this stuff all the time. Like, you could pick all the names in the world and you pick her, you pick fucking, like, 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 Gertrude. It's an old-ass baby. Nah, Gertrude is crazy. It's an old-ass baby. <laughs> Gertrude. It's old-ass baby. And Hank. Think about your baby Yo, being named Hank. Hey, baby Hank. sound like he's doing tax returns. Or, like, Craig. No offense, yeah. Craig. <laughs> Or better yet, or a save on. Yo, a save on. No, 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 no. It's funny nah. because I've, I've told him to his nah, face, Craig. Like, your your name is crazy, Craig. Your parents like, look at you and say, soap. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I like the name Savon. No, no, I got to say, I got to say, I got I got to say, I, don't even worry, I got to say, Savon is a nice name. Thank you. No, no, but just, it's original. <laughs> no, because you was a clean baby. <laughs> Clean. For context, guys, Savon means nigga. soap in French. Straight out the Savon. puss, clean as ever. Savon. Oh, shit. I like the name Savon. Oh, but why did they, wait, why did they pick that? Because my uncle's name was Lebon. <laughs> For no reason. So no, they just named also, me Savon. You know, there's Javon. I don't you know, know why they did this to me. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't have any. No. I don't know, Alex. You kind of have a basic name, too. No offense. My shit. Ba- I'm a basic bitch. Alex. Let me tell you. I don't yeah, like, Alex is very common. All right, can we talk? I hate Alex. I love my name. It means queen in Latin, Regina, huh? See, that's but hard. Alexander, is. Alexander is, oh, did you conquer all of the people? It's like, nah, nigga, I'm just Alex. As my long as nobody, Rock. I don't need to ever meet anybody named Hank or Doug. Can you imagine a baby named Doug? <laughs> no, that's why I said Craig. Like, imagine a little ass baby named Craig. What the fuck? <laughs> I, no, wait, last one. You have a baby, right? Mm-hmm. You look at it. Precious. New life in the world. Loving it. And you name her Dorothy. <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. I got a sister named It's Dorothy. a little whimsical. Oh, shit. Like, <laughs> Watch your mouth. Do? Watch your mouth. Wait, Pierre, you do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. My fault. That's a good name. <laughs> That's a good Wait, name. Wait, for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, oh, hey, hold shit. up. <laughs> <laughs> I got an aunt that was born in 1928. Named Dorothy. Hey. Named Agnes. I got <laughs> I got an aunt, Esther. What's her real name? Esther. What do you mean? Nah, because you know how like... Nah, oh, yeah. Well, going, going back to Joaquin Phoenix. A little tangent. <laughs> Joaquin pulled up. <laughs> oh, shit. He went... Joaquin Phoenix... Uh, Man, he was I, in I the Dark say, Knight. I, no? no, he was not oh, in the Dark fault. Knight. You know, I don't know the <laughs> white niggas in movies. mad <laughs> confident, too. He was not in the oh, Dark yeah. Knight. He, no. The Dark Knight <laughs> with Heath, uh, Heath Ledger. That's not that's oh, not shit. Joaquin Phoenix. Man, you know I get my whites confused. No, this is my weakness on the pod, like Caucasian actors. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm about to sound really stupid in this conversation. Nah, but too. no, we don't gotta sound Welcome. stupid because Joaquin Phoenix, he played the the latest Joker in the standalone film, The Joker. Oh, okay. The Joker okay. 2 is coming out. I think it has Lady Gaga in it, but needless to say, Wait, Alex, you're close. You're close. You know? I was close. You know? I was in, the, close. in the realm. He no? wasn't. No. I was dead. I'm sorry. He wasn't. I was dead. And I'm not gonna give him those points. I was Wait, Dark Knight, Joker. Aren't they like you know what that's like? Similar universe. That's like if a white person said, hey, you heard that lotto? And they said, no, that was that Ice Spice. Was it? It's close, but it ain't it. But that's not... Okay, but I get it, because they're both in a rap game. For a white person, I wouldn't, like, you know, not be them. too mad. You know? Okay. Yeah. If right. they're not a part of the culture, you My know? black brethren, you yeah. are not a part of the white culture in film. I got it. Yeah. See? You you give me some good clothes. Look, look at this resolution. We yeah. Just, yeah. Just, give me some good Joaquin Phoenix said, <laughs> fuck them gay niggas. <laughs> no, he didn't. 
No, he didn't. Nah, he didn't. No, 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 listen. In he this said, story, what he actually nah, did. Nah, he low key did. Right, so put me on. Put me on. What happened? He. I heard he was working on the film. Bro, he pitched the film to a studio. He pitched it? Yes. And From him? He, yes. He, him, and his team said, you yo, know the pronoun. I himself. wants to be gay. <laughs> I this wanted. story better be accurate, Savon, because nah, this for is real. so Hold ridiculous. Up. That's why I brought my laptop today. Yeah, bring Hold that up. shit. I ain't yeah, gonna lie. yeah, pull that so, shit out. The Hollywood Reporter reports. All right, producer for Todd Haynes' gay romance film addresses Joaquin Phoenix exiting as a nightmare. Okay, Joaquin Phoenix, five days before they started showing this gay romance, exited the set. He was the the main actor. He was the main actor. He was gay. All but right? was they fucking in the wanna, scenes yet? I don't. You know, he just couldn't bring himself to do it. <laughs> oh. Cause, no, because now I want to know if he would, if he just got psyched out. No, we oh. said no. Five days before filming, we said the details. Oh, oh before filming, yes. nothing was filmed yet. The Hollywood Reporter, oh, shit, the bro. The script was scaring this nigga. <laughs> oh shit! But he, oh shit! He presented the script. No, yeah, that's oh. what I'm thinking. Like, oh, yeah. why did you? No, but he had some writers. He probably had some writers, right? Joaquin but you knew Phoenix. This what is the, the Hollywood Reporter. Joaquin oh, Phoenix. Shit. <laughs> abruptly left last week and said on social media that this weekend that the situation has been a nightmare. This is what the producer said. Oh, it's been no. a nightmare. Okay. Report surfaced on Friday that Phoenix exited the drama. Okay. Featuring just five days before the film started to begin in Mexico. He said, I don't want nothing Mexican or gay. <laughs> that nigga is racist. Okay. <laughs> The theme of this episode is you know what you signed up for, A. Eh? And the second one is there could be other factors. He didn't say he exited because he didn't want it to be gay. There could have been a lot of things in production that's a nightmare, you know? But you... That's Did like it say me, that yo, he didn't want to be gay? That's like me saying, yo, Reggie, yeah. I want to do a podcast with you. Are you down to do the podcast? Okay. And you are committed. you like, you know what? I'm going to do this podcast. I can't wait to really like tap in with y'all, your mm -hmm. audience. I can't wait, Savon. Thank you for inviting me on this podcast. Okay. And then two days before, I'm like, you know what? Fuck podcast. <laughs> Hold on. So let me get this right. Joaquin could cancel, but Lauren Hill can't. <laughs> It depends, me, me, oh, right. it depends on the reason. Let me get this shit right. It depends on the reason. It depends on the reason. Everything's he, connected, everybody. Because why he dropped out this shit. That's why I'm asking. There could be production right, issues. But Savon, come on. What was the film about? Come on, ask some contact. What did the Hollywood Reporter say? <laughs> let's look up some more shit. Because, you know, it, it, maybe right. it's not as no, what no, we're let's thinking. Say, let's say I quit on the pod two days before filming because it's not that I don't like uh, Pierre, Alex, and Savon. I could just see the setup and be like, yo, production-wise, like I, I feel like it's going to be a hot mess. That could be a reason. It could be a reason, but I'm oh, a, see, I, I got I, reasons for Joaquin, but not Lauren. I'm going to read it again. <laughs> All right. I'm going to just read the report. Yeah. All right, all right. The Hollywood Reporter. This is legit, ladies and gentlemen. This is not just it me is making PMC this gang. up. It's PMC gang. <laughs> the producer for Todd Haynes' gay romance film. Mm -hmm. Highlight. Mm -hmm. The gay romance film addresses Joaquin Phoenix's exit as a nightmare. It's like some broke back mountain because shit. Because... <laughs> You you know what this is like this and and I'm I'm gonna give it to yeah. a, a complete parallel. Mm -hmm. Ryan Reynolds, he pushed I for saw, years. I saw Deadpool again. Wanting to do Deadpool, <laughs> you saw it again. Yeah, who you see it? Because, because he asleep. fucking fell asleep. I fell asleep. But who you seen it with this Twice. time? You no, asked me no, this time was like for me like recon. <laughs> Just you by yourself. Yes. Prove it. The fuck, nigga? How oh, do you want oh, to prove nigga? it? Nah, prove it. I don't know, nigga. Cause why you ain't asked me or Reggie or Pierre if we wanted to go? Cause you already seen it. She I don't see it with you. I didn't see it. Yet. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't see it. Yet. I didn't oh, want to be. The, I didn't want to be the. Oh, you didn't see it, yet, Pierre? Nah, I didn't see it. Yet. You live in Rhode Island. I was going front. Like. <laughs> I'm from New York, right? Big <laughs> Mountain Fall, Big New York. What it took you four hours to get to the movie theater? <laughs> it's like nah, but yeah, nah. But this is like if Ryan Reynolds went to Marvel, went to Fox, went to Disney, and said, "Hey guys, I really want to make a Deadpool movie. I really, really want to make this Deadpool movie." And they're like, "Hey, you know what? Fuck it. You can make the movie." <laughs> And then they finally green light it. Do you know how hard it is to get mm -hmm. a major studio to green light your project? It's a big deal. Your film, For sure. especially as an actor, producer, director. Like, once you start wearing multiple hats, like, there are some people who are just one thing in Hollywood, right? Ryan Reynolds is one of those guys who have translated to, hey, I'm also a producer, yeah. an executive producer, a director, and an actor. I'm not just an actor. Joaquin Phoenix is one of those guys who can just <laughs> go to anybody and say, hey, I want to do this. And if it gets greenlit, this means all of the pressure and the idea and the success will be on you. When you go to somebody and say, hey, 
I want to do this. I want to be invested in being a gay man on film. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then five days or two days before production, you back out of being gay. You can't do that. You know what probably happened? What? You know when yeah. you start reciting lines with your, your co-host? He was like, he looked in the mirror and he's like, I can't do this. <laughs> nah, you, you know when you're supposed to start? You know when you start reading up? Because I worked on set before, okay? I worked on a movie, reality TV show, all that shit, all right? You know, the oh, stand The table read. The table read. You know about the table uh -huh. read with the producer and anything? Mm -hmm. And they got to start reciting lines and, you know, they start... Joaquin sucks dick after he opens the door. Like, shit could have well, okay. got crazy in a moment. That is, that is like, you know, it is very intimidating, yeah. but it's like, but you knew this like a full year in advance, no? Pro maybe he thought his money was going to change after that shit. I think he's up for real. Oh, where? Yeah, um, Oscars. Oh, yeah. Oscar oh, he's winning. already done it. He's up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really think, I don't, I, I can't really, I don't know. We've never seen anything like this in Hollywood. Or maybe he was showing us what he's hiding. <laughs> what he's what? What he's hiding. What he's what? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know the name. <laughs> he said what he's into? <laughs> maybe he's hiding something. I don't know. Maybe, nah. You know, sometimes things get reflected through art. Right? I don't, we don't know. I don't know Joaquin. You know Joaquin? He has a, I don't know why. I know a Joaquin back in the spot. Like, <laughs> Me too. What race is I don't he? know this Joaquin, a nigga. Is it a black name? I thought it was a Latino name. Joaquin it sounds Argentinian. I think that's one of those where you have a black and Mexican baby and say that nigga Joaquin, <laughs> and now that shit is just fucked up in the world. <laughs> like, because oh. you know Carlos, I know you know a dark scene Carlos. Yeah, actually, Carlos I, do. Is yeah, I do. I do. I did. But it's some niggas that be named like Carlos Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> With a K. That's, or, like, or like a Jacquees. Yeah. Ja, ja, like, I don't know what yeah. you is Jacquees when we start the only nigga cross contaminating and our shit. You haven't met another Jacquees? Wait, Jacquees is a one, one off? Like a... He got to be a one off. No, I'm not, has, I thought that was like a name be. name. Really? You heard another nigga named Jacquees? I ain't I'm never like, heard of another nigga. Nah. Wait, hold up. I heard Ooh. a dude named Jocks. I know of Jocks. Yeah, Jacques. A Jacquees? If Reggie know a Jacquees, I'm going to ask what you were doing to see <laughs> Jacquees. You better not know. I only know, you know one Jacquees. You better not know enough. I'm going to talk to John. You know Jacquees. Is it? Yeah. No, isn't um, uh, yeah, uh -huh. Armand's rapper friend, isn't his name Jacquees? Jocks. Oh, I thought his name was Jacquees. Sorry, Jacques. Right. Are you sure? Whatever. Okay, moving on. Sorry, 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 sorry. I know. His homegirl is my homegirl. I know. Jacques? Yeah, it's Jacques. Yeah, ask him on, bro. No, not that I know of. Let's go with you. <laughs> Nah. Now you said my man know his girl, my girl, they're, my girl the same. They're both my in fraternities. Man is, my man is your man. Like I thought you was nah, on that shit. Nah, they're both in fraternities. Okay. So you know they All know right. each other. Shout out to them. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Can I keep it in TV and film real quick? Why not? <laughs> because I mean, I'm just not gonna know any other names. No, it's all good. <laughs> nah. I'm just I'm just putting that out there. She dead ass not. <laughs> same. But I do want to talk to my Game of Thrones, man. It's Ooh. been it's been tough. It's been tough. We can talk. I I don't want to talk too much because I still mean? work for that company. But a lot of people were underwhelmed with the uh, House Hallie. of the Dragon. Wait, hold on, oh. Savon. The producer stepping in. All right. <clears throat> Phoenix, who was straight, had been on set to take star in a role in the Haynes film about a gay character. Quote, if you are tempted to winger wag, <laughs> I mean, to finger wag. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> winger wag. My mom in the gutter, my fault, Wait, y'all. Hold up. <laughs> Please. Winger wag. What you been doing? <laughs> my, my mind in the gut. I'm sorry, y'all. Quote. Uh, <laughs> if you're tempted to winger wag. <laughs> Quote. If you are tempted to finger wag or <laughs> admonish us that that's what you get for casting a straight actor, oh. don't. This was oh. his project and that he brought to us, like Savon was saying. Long story short. They said the I guess the producer is that the producer uh Karen Vachon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The producer probably thought that they should have just went with uh a person that was just a gay with a gay role. And then and then the post was deleted. And the post was deleted. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I think I told y'all, <clears throat> and this may have been on Patreon. Make make sure y'all go You're sign up for the Patreon. Yeah. But yeah, I thought yeah. I wanted to. I was to gonna do bring action. that up. No, I I I do I genuinely thought as a child, as a young teenager, adolescent, yeah. I thought because I knew I always wanted to kind of like do something to entertain and to connect with people in a, a in a larger scale. And look at us now. Podcasting. <laughs> Podcasting. <laughs> I didn't know podcasting was a thing at that time. So Same. I thought maybe acting, because I couldn't sing. I couldn't really dance or rap. Wait, like, wait, wait. You can't sing? No, I cannot. You just sing. sang a couple of minutes ago. It wasn't good. Let us see. How no. do you know? 
We be singing like like very average one line, and Pierre's convinced like, yo, y'all should yeah, sing. Yeah, no, no, Reggie no, can no, sing. No. Say more. I think Alex can sing. Matter of fact, y'all can all sing. I like that. I, I might, just love that he believes in us. I, I can do a little <clears throat> tune, but me up. it wasn't enough to be like there, right? So <laughs> I always felt that I had to get my shit off in some type of capacity. So yeah. I'm like, you know what? Acting looks really dope. I thought I was gonna be a thespian. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. I thought I was gonna be a thespian. Excuse me. <laughs> It's another word for actor. Oh wait, I was watching the show when they broke the fourth wall and said this shit. Yeah, I thought I, I thought that I was didn't know what they lane. were talking about. <laughs> but there are certain practices that just didn't align with who I was. It's one thespian. of those practices is thanks, Pierre. Doing a lot of gay shit. Wait, but isn't that okay? Hold on, I, I have a question. Do that so, shit, for real. can you pursue acting like for real, for real, like really wanting to be like a movie actor? But like, can't you? Are you allowed to say? no to roles that for example like Savon was uncomfortable doing any like gay things can't you just like say no to those roles or you can't yeah you can say no we're gonna get another nigga I'm not gonna lie I ain't get that deep I really didn't so why'd you quit cause I didn't need to <laughs> I didn't need to get that deep to know this may not be for me hey, and that's okay you see how they recast the Jonathan Majors because the th <laughs> Reggie, that's what they do. <laughs> the thing with acting uh, is you don't fit the mold. Don't even worry about find, it. Yeah, but you could find another. Like for me, example, like let's say I really, really was passionate about being mm -hmm. an actress, but I was very uncomfortable doing nude scenes. Like mm -hmm. I never wanted to do it ever. But can't I still be an actress and just like not do that stuff or no? Like, do I have to get over it? I'm not gonna say no for sure, but I think um, Hollywood, the infrastructure of entertainment in general, is like who you know, right? So if you're just a complete hey. I just want to get this out the mud. I don't know anybody. I don't have any kind of connections to this industry. I just want to make it to the top. Some of those things you got to do to make it to the top is going to be- You have to They do don't it. align with your morals and who you are as a person. <laughs> and it's not a knock against what it is they're asking you to do, right. but it's just, this is not who I am and I don't want to put this on me. record. Yeah, it's not for me. Okay. So I think, yes, you can make it in that way. Um, but I think when you start, all of us start from the trenches. We don't have any entertainment connections. We don't have any film, music connections. We are literally first generations of success in this space, right? So I got to do what I got to do. And a lot of people take advantage of that, right? We talk about <clears throat> ditties. We talk about people who <laughs> try to take advantage <laughs> of, you know, people who aren't in that spot. And I think acting or Hollywood and entertainment they try to play on your sexuality. They want to see how far they could push you. And I knew at the entry point, yeah, I'm, we can't do that. Right. So uh, yeah, I had to, just... I had to pivot to podcasting. But what you know? But what if it would have took you to the next level? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I like I'm that. with you. Stay on your toes. You see where I'm at. I like. That. I feel like you could have made it as an actor and skip the class that nah, you were uncomfortable nah. with. No, mm -mm. you got to kiss some niggas. Yeah, I kind of. Do you that. have to like to like right. be an well, actor let's, though? Well, let's, let's let's be honest. I've never seen a Denzel Washington in that type of a role. Let's just go through actors. I think his. I actors. think there's certain outliers too. Okay. And also, I also think we didn't. And I'm not going to put this on Denzel Washington. Oh. <laughs> what? What about Will? Huh? What you said about Damn, that? that's a can of worms. Nah, nah, I don't know. You would know better than for what I wouldn't know. But should, what I would like to word? say, especially of actors of yesteryear, cameras wasn't as visible. <laughs> we don't know what they went through to get to where they are today. I think it's a little You're bit right. Different. We don't. Know. We don't. We have no idea. Not what a clue. They, what do you think like went... most most successful actors have had to do things like this? Yeah, because I don't know. It was like extremely Listen, common. You know what it is. And, and this is, we are mere mortals, right? We are people, we're everyday people. We aren't of the belief of performing arts. We aren't performing arts majors or enthusiasts. So when you are an actual thespian, actor, actress, you become a character. You become outside of yourself. That's why you see so many people who do these roles and they aren't anything like who they are in real life because they subscribe to the art of acting. That's one thing that a lot of people may not be willing to do, a lot of people can't do. So that's why I think the talent or the gift of acting is, is one of those things where unless you actually have that gift, you probably can't relate because I think there's a lot of people, again, being nude in the scene, 
there's some people who are against that, like religiously. I think yeah. we talked Zendaya. about it on the pod, yeah, right? Zendaya. Like, there's certain people who are like, "Hey, I am not doing this no matter what. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stand on this, no matter how long it takes me to get to where I want to be. Right. I'm going to stand on how I feel." But then there's other people who's like, "Hey, this is just a part of the job, and if I got to do it now, they're not going to make me do it when I'm a twenty million dollar right. actor." Yeah, I just said it because it kind of feels like you have to build a certain amount of leverage first, yeah. Yeah. right? Oh, Cache, yeah. like you got to build, and then they won't play with like you. Zendaya did. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, right, right. She yeah. could put in a clause like yo i'll do this show you guys need me but don't put me in any nude scenes and she can do that so mm -hmm. but it takes a while like yeah it takes a while it takes a while to get there and so. you have to be as talented yeah. as you are to do that and i knew i wasn't that talented so I knew they was going to try me and I'm not with that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would love to get into, that I would love to get into my acting bag, but you know how like Andrew Schultz, like when he gets like acting roles, he's just Andrew Schultz. Yeah. Yes. I would yeah. love to do like a little cameo and like a little, you know, film. Kevin Hart's like that too. Yeah. Kevin no, but like Kevin Hart's a little, you know, he be, he be, he be acting. He be, he, he be Yeah. He be thespian in. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Keep Save it up. Savon got us all saying thespian. Thespian. Oh, thespian. I ain't gonna lie. The first time I ever heard that word, I had a manager. I I thought he was getting <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Save he on. Asked, Save he on. asked me, am I a thespian? I almost punched that nigga in the face. Save on. Don't ever ask no, me that didn't. shit again. That would have been. Wait, oh, like, what did you just call me? And I thought he was flirting with me. That would have been a crime. Been Wait, a crime. but why would he say, are you a thespian? I don't, because he was trying me. And that's how I knew <laughs> I got to pivot to podcasting. And thank God I found Alex. <laughs> Who would I saved this nigga. I know. Alex, you remember when I called you like, hey man, we need to do a podcast. Like, yeah. I'm a call that changed everything. Yeah, Fucked man. Up. I was chilling with Queen Latifah and them. Here go this nigga. You was in Atlanta with cameras and shit, right? I spun a block what? on Alex for real. No, I really did. Twin. For real. Twin. <laughs> spinning. Nah, I was the first <laughs> successful spinning a block in life. Word. For real. I love that about did you. Did I not? And I was, no, I ain't going front. You did. You was the first to spin. Really. I was Nelly and Ashanti. The best spin the plug story Facts. of this decade. Especially when you drop some ecstasy in it. Mm -hmm. That's have a kid. Best spin. Allegedly. You got to throw that shit in there. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> they, nah, his, his lawyers came out and said that actually wasn't no ecstasy on his person. I just want to highlight that. It's a need to know. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. There's certain drugs Hot that in. don't just get thrown around. <laughs> I, yeah. if, a, if you get accused of having ecstasy and you was lit during the ecstasy era, the chances are you had that shit on you still. You know how lit you got to be in the studio and say, I think hot get butt get beat, huh? Like, that was ecstasy, liquor, and bud. I know it. Shout out to my boy Nelly, though. I, they said he didn't have any, any on his person as of recent yeah. when he got pulled over. You know, salute to him and Ashanti, Long Island legend, Ashanti, Long Island mm -hmm. legend. For May sure. we never forget it. Anyway, sure. speaking yeah. of drugs, I know I we didn't cover it in pre-pro, but you guys uh, saw the articles about um, uh, Michael Jackson's son and Coke. So that you talking about Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan? I said Jackson. Yeah, I'm Michael Jordan. Jordan. I'm about like, what the blanket do? Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say no, not blanket. <laughs> No, oh my God. Jordan just, like, just, a, just a really like 30 second story of, so like when I was younger in elementary school I had this like Asian friend and he like Me too. Just, yeah. he came shout out to Nina Chung and so um, <laughs> he came from Korea and like you know I was you know I'm friendly and I was like oh my God let's play yeah. and he had just came and like could barely speak English and he just you know what other countries all know about the US and so he was like playing basketball <laughs> and, then funny, he, and then he like Damn. dunked he was the playing, Asian nigga dunk? He was playing basketball like a mini hoop. He was playing basketball. He was so hype and then he dunked. He was like, Michael Jackson. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you correct him? No. I didn't have a heart. heart. He was so happy. <laughs> but shout out to my uh, What's his Asian name? friend. What's his name? Remember his name? His name was like David or some shit. David? Oh. Shout, oh. Out David. Shout, shout out to David. Shout out to David. Reggie. Michael Jackson. Yeah, okay, wait, continue. Um, no, no, no. I, was, I was just asking if you guys saw the um, the news articles and stuff that. Yeah, about my nigga sniff coke yeah, in my life. In yeah. the south of France. Oh, 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 that's what Jordan's son doing? Oh, LeBron's son at the Olympics while they went go. And, yeah. and with well, the other ones in the league, so like. <laughs> I mean, I mean just, what you trying to say? Nah, nah. I, I love. Michael I don't want to do this with you because I love what both. I, I love both of these athletes. Who I think super influential. But yeah. if we're gonna like use their children as the barometer for their greatness, oh, I'm here to debate. I never said that. I'm just highlighting <laughs> what are the facts. What are the facts? <laughs> Jordan son didn't go to the league. Bronny's in the league. What's more impressive? <laughs> Bryce on the way. I'm just saying, Bryce looked like he on the way. 
<laughs> All right. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you this question, and then we can move on. We don't have to stay here. I promise you. Olymp- they did win gold in the Olympics. Though. I, we do not have to stay here. Okay. But I'm going to ask you one question. I want you to answer honestly, and then we can move on. Do you have the next topic? I do. I got it ready. the next topic. I've got it ready. Beautiful. Oh, my God. I, I fucking love this podcast. Yep. All of the people that you know in life, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. How many people have aspired to play basketball for a living mm-hmm. or snort cocaine? <laughs> There's that, a lot. The, the bas- <laughs> Which one? No, I, I know more on the basketball side, but that's because I come from a situation where you only think you can make it with rap and hoops. Okay. So that's not saying much. So okay. if more people in your life that you know wanted to actually play basketball, yeah. And made it like a Bronny James. Shout out to Bronny. Like no, mm-hmm. no diss at all. Yeah, but he made it. He's one of the ones that made it. He in there. Mm-hmm. For he you did deal. what he was supposed to do mm-hmm. because playing basketball mm-hmm. is honorable. Snorting coke, it's fun. Is what is that? What do they consider that fun? Yeah, I've what's never the word? done it before. What's the word for that? Whatever. You, insert your adjective right, right here. there. Mm-hmm. So what I you just saying, know it's though? not. It's not a clear path. Is what I'm saying. What the fuck are you talking it's about? Not a, you're losing me. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a clear path. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? It's not about a right clear now. path. So what I'm saying is- you speaking to me in riddles? Don't judge. Yeah, I did. Now next topic. <laughs> Savon, that went nowhere. Savon, what the fuck? I have no, no idea next topic. what you just said. I thought he was about to no, bring think, up a- Think about it. Think about it. A clear just path, think about it. A clear path foul? Which Everybody one is comments, easier to do? Leave Snort your, coke or play ball? Oh, okay. Okay. Which one is more excited? <laughs> Which one is scarier to do? Which one is harder to do? But then it's way harder to do what Michael hey, Jordan's son was doing hey, than shoot a hoop. I don't. Oh, never mind. I, I feel it, but hey, at least Uh-oh. Bronny's trying to create his own name. <laughs> and so was Marcus Jordan. The Coke you know boys. <laughs> God bless to both those men. <laughs> you got listen, Michael Jordan from the nineties. Them niggas was doing meth, coke. <laughs> And drinking whiskey before the game. They different them niggas too. Different. Them niggas was plumbers. Them different niggas was different people. So different hours. Yeah, yeah, I'm not about to say that. Gen Z. Yeah. You got to... Re- re- never mind. Keep going. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. Uh-huh. Speaking of errors, Todd the Creator recently did a new... He spoke down with something. He did another oh, interview. Oh, shit. Another gay nigga. <laughs> what? No. Oh shit, it's another one of them. No, no. We talk about Joaquin Phoenix. <coughs> Yo, I've never seen Alex just at a loss for words like that before. You know what yeah, he said? About, was like, what? No, like it's not like the comment itself and Alex said it. It's just that you be throwing us off. Like it's like from left field. Nah, yo, shut up. And we need like a moment to like recalibrate and just kind of Nigga, where process. Am I? Get me out of here now. Please. I don't even know how to read the words for my next topic. <laughs> Todd the cre- Yeah, look at you. Go, you go, Todd go. the Creator recently did an interview <laughs> for sure where he spoke about new artists and their place there. All right, y'all, y'all know how I get. Pay attention, okay, nigga. How I'm you get? Focus I'm up. Listening. Focus up. I, nah, I'm listening. Because I didn't know. This, like, we on theme today, for real. I love yes. us. No, we on break. Although topics did have a little theme to them, you they know? They do, they do. Uh, yeah, let's get us about it. All right, let me tell y'all. This, this, this is our last one. one. I promise we out of here. And I, I wanted to end on this because okay. we've hard had- Hard bottom or hard top? What? <laughs> we've had similar conversations okay. about this topic here in recent Wait, weeks. What? <laughs> Oh, okay. Tyler Creator has some harsh words to say on rap media lately. Rap and media lately. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what does he say? He calls out new artists and believes they have ulterior motives. His quick gripe is a part of a teaser of a new episode with Maverick Carter. Maverick Carter is actually best friends with LeBron James. Mm-hmm. So this is down from their, this is from their sit down. And in the clip, Tyler Creator says, there's so many niggas out right now that aren't musicians that are getting treated like musicians because they make meme records. Mm. Publicly, people will probably like it. I don't give a fuck about... Publicly, will be like, oh, okay, this is what he's saying. He said publicly, they'll be like, I don't give a fuck about music. I just do this shit for the money. Mm. Uh, he compared the prevalence of this to famous, the famous rapper, the famous Spider-Man meme. Mm. When every publication is like, yeah, let's just pull it out. You're taking up space for niggas like me. I want to know who, like, I want him to say some names. Yeah, I want him to name drop. I want to point him out. Who do you think he was talking about? <clears throat> Playboy Cardi. 
No, I don't believe that. That's that's my opinion. Oh, okay. I don't think Playboy Cardi <laughs> makes like meme music. No, yeah. I think he has a very I, specific I, style. I think he genuinely wants to make that. I think he <laughs> he found a formula that yeah. works for today's climate. Yeah, which is sure. why I believe it's meme music. No, but not everything about today's climate is meme music. Like when I think about meme music, I think about like TikTok music. Where mm-hmm. it's just short enough and you get it. Like when you see that a meme, one line. that one liner that you're just gonna get and everyone's gonna get universal. That's what I think yeah. Playboy Cardi is. Absolutely not. Nope. Name me three Playboy Cardi lines that are known universally. Fiend, fiend, fiend. That was Travis Scott. Fiend, fiend. <laughs> Who was singing it? Travis Scott. That wasn't Playboy Cardi? Nah, I found out it was Travis. That wasn't his song. It was Travis, yeah, it was Travis Scott's song, Playboy Cardi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Same. I fucked that up. No, I do think they genuinely <laughs> like making music like that. Yeah. For okay. for like the the crowd and like the raging type of like I don't think that's for memes. Yeah. I'm trying to think of who I think Drake makes oh. songs for memes. IG captions. Yeah. And IG captions. But Drake has shown a love for music out of No, for sure. Yeah. I'm not I'm not saying he don't love it. I'm just yeah. saying like the artist that makes songs for memes. And for I sure. think that's a part of his like greatness too. Mm-hmm, that I he don't can think, encompass yeah, all yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. He knows yeah. what he's doing when he does the things that he does. Like there hasn't been a Drake song in the last however many years mm-hmm. that I haven't felt inspired to post as an Instagram caption. Mm. Even his latest drop with 100 gigs. Yeah. He, I think the very first line was something about tell my mother or my mother. Like, tell I'm going to play it. Yeah, yeah. That blue, green, red record I like because it's one your waist, mind and mind and music. Mm-hmm. Please tell my mother. I'm so like, what the fuck? That's, that's <laughs> Instagram caption worthy yeah. depending on your situation. Like, that's very easy mm-hmm. to kind of like translate to an audience. I don't mm-hmm. think Ice Spice uh, cares about music. I think she caught a wave. But <sighs> waves work. I do think her yeah. music is very. I feel I don't like saying this because it's it sounds like such a lazy take because so many people say this about her. Mm-hmm. But honestly, her music I do think she caters it towards like oh people bitches are gonna repost this on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, which is sort of meme like, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, are memes still a thing? I or think is it TikTok? No, nah, it's memes. I said well for me, I, I said memes every day. Yeah, people make memes and they're yeah. hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah what, what's the last meme that you sent or that had like some significance? <laughs> Like, is it? No, I'm being I'm being sig- honest. Because, significance are just just funny. Because a meme to me is a picture with a caption, some type of caption yeah. on the picture. Yeah, they right? still doing that. I don't know. I think stickers. Yeah, yeah. I send mad stickers, but I send. Yo, Savon has <laughs> on an iMessage. Yeah. Savon has 18 Kevin Hart stickers, and he just like <laughs> I different. love it. I gotta change it. Yeah. Gotta change my method. No, I love, no, I'm saying I I'm love a sticker it. guy. No, I, like I fuck it. with the stickers. I like when you do I that. Fuck so with the stickers. stickers for me have replaced memes. But that's a gift, Savon. Fucking uncle. <laughs> no, the kids fuck with stickers. Yeah, but like that's the yes. a, a gift would be y'all the equivalent. Are late. Y'all are late. No, we're not like, no, I'm talking about how to make stickers. Is, yeah, you did. Yeah, she taught you. No, but I don't think, I'm, no, I'm saying, is it more of an old hat thing to use stickers? <laughs> I'm saying the gif, <laughs> I don't no. think so. I'm saying the gif is more equivalent to uh, yeah, a meme. Yeah, that's not a meme. Yeah, stickers like more like gifs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's what you really can I didn't know to. memes were still a thing. I haven't mm. seen a meme in a very long time. Yeah. But do we feel like Tyler Creators, right? Are, are they taking space for our other artists? Um... I do think like someone like him who genuinely cares about the craft, it must be frustrating looking out at this landscape and seeing like a bunch of people pop off for like a fucking like random ass song while he while he cares so much. I feel him. My only thing with him is Tyler, this is the reason why you're winning. This is the reason why your music and your art is cutting through. Mm -hmm. It's cutting through because other individuals aren't able to go down that rabbit hole you're you're able to go down because of your love and passion for music. So if anything it probably benefits them a little bit too. So like, let them be them. It lets them be them. Mm-hmm. And the, the shit that's going to stay here and stick is going to stand out. Yeah, for sure. Right? Like memes, we're going to get one, a, a bus a dozen, right? Mm-hmm. A new one get created today, next one get created tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, like Reggie said, it could be a bit annoying as you know, someone that has a love for it. But. Yeah, because that would be like us being like very passionate about potting, really coming in every single week and working every day, marketing the shit and stuff. And then like us looking at people who just want to randomly start a podcast and don't put effort into it. Yeah. It is like that will make us look better because like the quality of this, like a real production. But then at the same time, all these random ass podcasts kind of make podcasts overall look bad. Right. So I guess that's what he's saying. That. Yeah. Uh, um, no, no, no. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree 1000% with you. It goes back to like the Young Miami versus JT shit that we talked about at the top of the episode. Right. Like. 
there's one person who clearly cares about the craft and there's people who don't care about the craft, but they break through. And some Full people circle. just have that it factor. Some people just got the it factor. I do want to ask y'all a question before we get out of here. What's up? Because I've been thinking about it. Um, pulling from ice from the Joe Budden podcast and also my personal thought. I'm always conflicted. You know, we, we have these conversations about the big three when it comes to Kendrick, Drake, J. Cole, right? Wherever you place them, that's on you. I'm not going to sit here and try to like place them myself. I'm not going to ask y'all to place them either. But right after the big three, there is an outskirt of artists from that era, from that time, with that ability, with that market marketability, and with that success that we kind of attribute. Um, and I, I, I don't know. We don't have to stay here long. I promise you. We really don't. But I just want to know what y'all think when it comes to these two artists. Who we're all fans of. I think I know who you're going to say. I hate them. Wale and Big Sean. Big Sean has been in the news lately. Mm-hmm. You know Big what's Sean. fucked up? We know? didn't talk about Big Sean. <laughs> you know what's <laughs> fucked up? Just to add to what you're saying, he's been promoting this album, and it doesn't feel like people really give a fuck. Yeah, unfortunately. It's kind of getting me tight. I'm not going to... I'm a little bit upset as to why I'm not more excited, because I've wanted new music out of him. Continue, I think man, people give a fuck, but not as much as not, we... Not at the level that yeah, we yeah, anticipated, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, yeah. Reggie? Like, yeah. he was once, like, the... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the draw. The yeah. crazy thing is, Big Sean's promoting an album, and Wale is promoting a tour. A tour, I saw that, yeah. yeah. Right? And so, now that time is passing... We get a chance to kind of see things from a fuller picture because just like the artists, we're growing with the artists, mm-hmm, right? So mm-hmm. we see Drake, we see Kendrick, we see J. Cole, we put them in their place, wherever you want to order them, cool, cool, do whatever it is, right? After them, there's another class. Mm-hmm. That class is Big Sean, that class is Wale, that class is Meek Mill, that class may be Young Thug. Um, I think Future is an anomaly. Uh, he's an outlier. Sure. I don't even know where to put he him. He somehow I think, gravitates with that big three adjacently. And like, the crazy I, thing it's, is, it's crazy. he's been out before a lot of the For people sure. that we even mentioned him with. Yeah, he's he old. dropped in like 08, 09. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, like early. Future, he he lives in his own space. Dungeon but when family. it comes to like the blog era, right? Um, there's the Big Sean's, there's the Wale's, there's the Meek Mills, there's the Young Thugs, there's the Wiz Khalifa's. It's that class of artists, right? But Big Sean being so visible and Big Sean saying so um, vehemently that, hey, I am a part of the big three. A lot of people, it creates conversations. I don't put him in that big three. I, I When I heard, I'm sorry, Joe. No, I don't put him in that big three. Right. But right outside of the big three, I think Big Sean and Wale, Meek Mill would probably be next. And I really just want to put those three in the conversation. Mm, okay. If no. you had to rank the big three, number two, the second big second three. Second tier? The second big three mm-hmm. of Wale, Big Sean, and Meek Mill, how would you rank those gentlemen? Because the oh, first and the second big three would be number four, theoretically. Yeah. Yeah. So how would we rank them? Who's going first? Easy. For me, at least. Wale, Meek Mill, Big Sean. Oh, I'm going Wale, Big Sean, then Meek Mill. No, I'm not mad at that. Because Wale, like, he makes such... Okay, so Big Sean, I've spoken... I feel like every time we talk about Big Sean, I'm always like, I don't have amnesia. Like, he literally had hits. Hits. Marvin Gaye, Char- Marvin Gaye and Chardonnay, sure. My Last, like, Dark Sky Paradise, the entire album was phenomenal. So, like, he... I do think he makes great music, but Wale, when you think about it, he always makes great music. Like, he's never, like, yes. dipped. So, I, that's why he's my number one. And the pen game. Like, I've never cringed at a Wale verse. Yeah, like, he makes... You know what I mean? Even today, like, he makes great songs. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like... Um, I've Big cringed Sean, at some Big Sean balls. Yeah, Big Sean and Meek Mill yeah. both dipped in terms of music quality. And then um, Big Sean, I just love him so much. Like, mm-hmm. I'm never giving up on Big Sean. I'm excited for the album. And then Meek Mill, I do think he had, like, an amazing era. Yeah. But that era is not here anymore. You want to know part of the reason? Because I want you to answer this. You want to know part of the reason why I had Meek before Big Sean? To Reggie's point, he's had a plethora of hit records. I don't want to take that from him. And what his contributions to good music, come on now. When you say he, you're saying... I'm talking about Big Sean. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? But what those Meek Mill records do, they kind of stick around. For the for culture. Sure. Like, for the for culture. For the culture. Like, yeah. they kind of yeah. stick around. Or even the features he do, they stick around. Down to the intro. Yeah. Which is finally starting to kind of dwindle out just a mm-hmm. little bit. 
But he his intro was on lock for like mm -hmm. he had that shit on lock for ten yeah, almost almost eleven years. But I really want us to do, and maybe this is a Patreon thing. Mm -hmm. I want us to create the criteria for what that next big three is. Got you. That's here. Yeah, because yeah. this is a question on the fly. We don't really know. I mm -hmm. think from the surface level, mm -hmm. me. And I I, I want to factor in my personal intake and also the impact, right? You have to. My, so let me. Uh, this fucked up. <laughs> Personally, I'm gonna say big. I'm I'm gonna say. I'm excuse me. I'm gonna say Wale would be the first in that big tier, and then Meek Mill, and then Big Sean. But Same. from a public facing standpoint, what I'm gonna say because. <sighs> This is so fucked up because I think Wale makes the best music out of those three. I truly do. I'm not mad at that. But I don't know if the public, I don't know if people gravitate towards Wale it's a personality in the same thing. way that they gravitate towards a Big Sean and a Meek Mill. It's a personality so it gets, thing. Yeah. It gets really tricky when we talk about the next big three, in but, my opinion. But are we talking about music or personality? Because I don't want you to skew the two I'm talking all-encompassing. It, it does because, all matter. Okay. Yeah, because I right, think right. The, the, the original, the, 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 the tier one big right. three, so the Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole is mm -hmm. all-encompassing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, based on what we just saw over the last year, mm -hmm. We can definitively, definitively, oh, definitively. I know that would be kicking my ass too. Woo, that would be kicking my ass. No, you just no. caught a left and a right, right to the I grill. Had a stroke. Take your time. <laughs> take your time. Hold up. I had a stroke. God forbid. <laughs> we can honestly say yeah. that J Cole out of that big three is number three. But if we were to put J Cole yeah. in a class with Big Sean, Meek Mill, and Wale, he'd number be number one, one right? Yeah. So we can easily say J. Cole's number three, cool, whatever the case may be. But I think it's all encompassing. I think it's music, I think it's output, I think it's marketability. So when I talk about the next big three, in my opinion, which is Meek Mill, Wale, and Big Sean, I got to judge them on that same scale. Mm. And on that same scale for today, I'm going to say number four out of the big three would be. Oof. Doug? Meek Mill. No, I'm just talking about these three. Oh, okay. You right? said number four. Number four okay. out of those three. Oh, out of those three. Out got of, you, got you. Out of those three. To add to the real yeah, big Yeah, because three. again, I think number four definitively you, would be you. future. For sure. You get what I'm saying? So I'm, sure. I'm talking about the blog era rappers. If you want to throw Wiz Khalifa in there, I don't really think, and, and Reggie, correct me if I'm wrong, because I know you're really tapped in when it comes to like that, that blog era space. Was Future considered the blog era rapper? I would say so because when you think of 56 Nights, it was around that during true. that time. That yeah, true. it was. This is true. Uh, what's the name? The joint had two sisters on it. I'm going to say he's grandfathered in. I'm going to have to go Future. I don't, I don't think we judge Future on future. the same scale that we judge all we, the other guys we, we because don't. of the style of music. We don't. But so you know what's funny? I think he it kinda, is yeah. top four but easily. I, but I think it kind of happened by accident, right? Because, because right? Because when you it tally did. up it all did. of uh, Future's placements now and everything he's done at this very point at 2024, at the time when we was in the club fucking with his shit all the time, I'm sure we thought it was going to be just in the moment. Nah, he stuck around for every era of it. So I would I wouldn't be mad if we put him at four, influence, even if it's not like the lyrical miracle influence, dude. Hits, influence, all hits. of those things. Yeah, we can say. Yeah, and, and, and future could be number three. He could he could After argue, Drake, he could Kendrick, argue, like, he could be depending on who you ask. He, he could be number three. Don't ask him. Don't ask no niggas from uh, Dreamville. But, I'm, I'm but, not. But, I'm just, but yeah, but but, uh, but my, you could. Mm. The caveat is yeah. futures in a class of his own. I just want to keep it on this style of artist, and maybe we're making this Can't too front. niche. I'll put him at four. I'm not. I'm not mad at that. So yeah. let's say he's four, and then we yeah. put the other three gentlemen at five, six, and seven. Because you want to know why? I think Can I, I just add to what you said. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The futures consistency. I think nudges out oh, the rest sure. of them. For right, sure. we've seen Big Sean take a break, and of course he was going through some things. We've seen Wale take a break. We know he was going through some things. We've seen Meek mm -hmm. Mill take a break. One thing we have not seen Future do at basically forty years old now is take a break, and he's done it at a high level. Granted, I know he's not the super lyrical dude that maybe the other um, individuals en encompass, but at the end of the day, he came with the slaps, the songs, no, for and the sure. hits. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah, think he sure. just gets kind of forgotten in in, in these conversations. Mm -hmm. But in these conversations, again, I I, I want to keep it Meek, Big Sean, and Wale. Yeah, my personal would be Wale, Meek Mill, Big Sean. But in and if if I had to put money, if we had to do another draft yeah, yeah, yeah. where Alex fucking smoked us, go check out that episode. <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you. I would probably put. <laughs> Meek Mill, Big Sean Wale. And that's not my personal take. But I think from a newsworthy standpoint, I think from an anticip 
uh, anticipation standpoint from album releases, mm -hmm. I think people anticipate while, um, excuse me, I think people anticipate Meek Mill and Big Sean more than they anticipate a Wale project. And I think publicly facing uh, from a social... Disagree. Yeah, really? I think from a social standpoint, remember Meek how Mill... Low, remember how low Meek Mill just sold on his last project? I'm not saying sales. Oh, oh, I think, oh. But I, anticipation, isn't that a part of it? The sales, I, right? Wouldn't it reflect it? Okay, true. Right. Talk yeah. to me. Yeah, because... So if, maybe Big Sean would be number four <sighs> in, that, in, in, in this conversation. Who has more hits, Big Sean or Wale? Personally, <laughs> yeah, because they were also a part of, <laughs> of conglomerates. Uh, yes, yeah, of, yeah. of major movements when it comes to MMG and, right. and good music. Yeah, yeah, so it's tough because a lot of their posse cuts may be some of their biggest hits. Mm -hmm. I went to Wale's biggest songs the other day, and the first thing I saw was um, Roscoe Dash and Waka Flocka. Hey, Look, my no hands. Hey, and that was his biggest we, song on we, Apple. Can we agree that Meek Mill's music and Wale's music ages just a little bit better than Big Sean's? Yeah. We don't even hear Big Sean say, boy, I do it. We don't hear none of that shit no more. Mm -hmm. So I would use it as my caveat and to put him below them because their if, music has aged really pretty well for the most part. But if we're Some of that Big blog, Sean shit. Ugh, but if we're talking about like blog era, if that's yeah. the criteria, that shit was lit in the blog era. For sure. Well. For sure. So like, for sure. Yeah. If for we're sure. judging it on a recency bias, then. We're talking about today. Today. Oh, we're talking about today. Oh, today. We're talking man. about today. Oh, I thought we were doing blog era. Okay. Where are they today? I know they're from the blog era, mm -hmm. but today is what I'm asking. How would you rank them? That was the question. I don't know, because Big Sean makes, if we really listen, his music recently has been, well, besides the Yes single, that um, his last single, no. On Up, <laughs> On Up with the with the sample, I think it was a Jodeci sample. I feel like mm -hmm. he makes great music now today too, so I don't know. We could talk for hours about this because they're also, it is yeah, tough. There, there's a lot. It's, there's a lot, it's yeah. a real like conversation and to have. It's, an, a, it's a preference yes. between the three of them. And we can put the Kendrick Lamar conspiracies to bed real quick. Um, and the Not Like Us video, Kendrick was wearing a jacket that said 8824. A lot of people probably speculated that it, the brand made it like that. And others just thought, no, y'all, he's probably going to drop an album on 8824. And he's going to, you know, try to cryptically tell us that. 8-8 uh, eight, eight has passed at the time of his recording. Uh -huh. And Big Sean also moved the release of his album. Yeah. Which is make so initially when I heard that I thought, damn, he running from Kenny? But I heard him say in a Charlemagne interview that he's still mixing. But I honestly, I don't know what's true. Artists say things all the time. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. We don't. I don't know what's true. And they yeah. all come from the era of mystery. Yes. Right? Yeah. Smoking mirrors and being entertainers and performers. There's still a certain level of a fourth wall that they try to protect. Absolutely. So we never know what's true with these Touches, artists, yeah. right? Like Early in the episode, we talk about the Lottos and the Ice Spices and whoever. Like, they're just a little bit more, um, I want to say green. Green, yeah, Right? They're yeah. just not as experienced where mm -hmm. a Big Sean and a Kendrick, they're not going to give you everything. Mm -hmm. And we saw that with Big Sean's interview with uh, Charlemagne. He didn't really give up everything. He didn't give up too much. Except about marriage. Yeah. I feel him. <laughs> Cause sometimes you don't, you think like you never been with somebody for 10 years and said, I don't know. Charlemagne was like, yo, big Sean, why you ain't get married yet? <laughs> Facts. Um, that's personal. I can tell you never been in that. <laughs> what you I, mean? I feel him. I feel him. Sometimes the person I want to marry, I don't know if I want to marry. <laughs> the argument on the timeline was that, you know, he didn't have a problem having a child with Janae, et cetera. Cause now nah, that's easy though. I was about to say, I feel like I, both, of them are, both of them are big responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. You you want to know one thing that doesn't get highlighted in that combo enough, and I don't agree with Big Sean because I feel like a kid is a big responsibility. What doesn't get highlighted in that conversation about having a kid is that that person also has a kid now. Yeah. So if that person was yearning for a child, like they still get satisfied from. Yeah, it. like what if like yeah. this is why I don't believe in talking about people's relationship and like dissecting them because right. what if like Janae and Big Sean both wanted a kid a and that is what they wanted mm. out of this chapter in life. Yes, for sure. Have and, you guys ever thought about right, that? Like, or if that's the responsibility that they wanted to take on. Yeah, and the, but everyone's you know like, I mean? no, you're supposed to get married first. Like, I'm, yeah, like, I'm like, I'm like, bro, like we don't know these fucking yeah. people. Sometimes, different strokes for different I'm, folks. I'm not gonna lie, y'all can be honest with me, audience. Y'all yeah. be honest too. Like there has been people that I've been with where I'm like, yo, I would love to have. Have a child with you, mm -hmm. but I will not marry you. <laughs> I can't relate. I mean, but I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying. There are some saying. people where I'm like, yo, I think you would be an amazing co-parent. I think you would be an amazing mother. Because I of do their... not know if I want you to be my wife. Mm. You know what? 
what? Like, I feel like people need to be way more open to that opinion. No, like, for real. Yeah. No, honestly. That's real shit. It, yeah. Especially if someone wants a kid. Granted, I understand that the, the uh, argument. A kid is a huge responsibility. You have to take care of them for 18 years yeah. plus, et cetera. I understand it. Mm. I'm just saying, one might not look at that as a big uh, responsibility if that's what because they, they want. Can, they can co-parent. Yes. I and think, if they don't want marriage, mm-hmm. then that probably is the bigger responsibility to them, unfortunately. Yeah. I also think a lot of people do project. Like, they're like, no, if you're not married, then you're creating a broken home. And I'm like, you know what? Like, that doesn't autom- Just because they're not married doesn't mean they automatically are creating a broken home. Right. Like, you know? You don't so, know the ah! dynamics. Well, again, I, I don't know. I like the, the idea, idea of a nuclear family I, for a child. The idea, okay, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank that's you. fair. Uh, the that's idea fair. of a traditional that's mom, fair. dad that's under fair. one roof. That's but like, fair. people are happy all the time with like, you know. This, this situation. Yeah. 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 Um, to be fair, um, Big Sean did say uh, uh, eventually um, with Charlemagne that they both, him and Janae, both have stuff that they have to work out with, uh, within themselves. Yeah, but you gotta I let your girl say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've said that. I've said that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sometimes you he doesn't handle that better. Yeah, you supposed yeah. to let your nah, girl he, say that. Nah, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> he wasn't ready for the cop for the for the question. <laughs> nah, and Charlemagne had him. He was Shout almost like, yeah, but, but he was swerved yeah. it though. Like yeah, he. Sh- he Not, said a whole bunch of nothing. Like. Shorty ain't new here, yo. Shorty, <laughs> nigga said, yo, Shorty got shit to work on work. Like, he said him too. Nice he did, he did. Yeah. But it's like, yo, bro, you're supposed to let your girl say that. That exact thing he said, no. I would allow for my girl to say. I don't like that. What you don't like? No, because sometimes men, we need to be honest too. No, no, and we, we need to definitely we need be to honest. let people know when the woman right, that you're be fantasizing men. over, let's be men. She needs some work too. Let's be men. Can we talk about like, work? Okay, too? but like, why? Why do we have to tell everybody that? Because like, she need work and I need work. Okay. I need y'all because but what automatically we... gets assumed is the man Thank always you. needs work. No, I know. Nah, Thank you. She hold need on, work and I need work. Let's talk about being a man. Okay. There's certain things that we keep player. Because we're men, right? Mm-hmm. There's certain like we're we're not gonna nag shorty off, right? We're gonna figure out a way in our approach to figure out a way to really properly communicate this to us. The same way for women, I say this all the time. Mm-hmm. Women protect men's feelings all the time. All the time. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah, Shout yeah. Out so to it's, y'all. A, it's a real big salute to y'all. A lot of men don't Facts. know that. Yeah. Yep, yep. So what I'm saying is, if you really want to get to a position in a place where the both of y'all are healthy and happy. That's not the medium where you showcase that at. But even what, if both uh, of you guys do need it, how do you think the partner receives that on an interview? But what if they've already had the conversation? I understand. But listen, I understand, Pierre. Yeah, but listen, yeah. what I'm saying. How do you think Janae received that? So I'm talking about for the betterment of the, their relationship. Mm-hmm. How do you think she received that when she heard that on that interview? She, I, I don't know, Reggie. She looked happy in the music video. <laughs> they shot that like three months ago, Pierre. <laughs> like I mean, in any situation, like. Well, I would say keeping it private is the best for any situation. But also, I can't project because it's like these are celebrities, so they're yeah. in completely different circumstances. So I don't know. She probably didn't love hearing that, but hey, that's which, a great answer. Which wouldn't bode well for their, the goodness of their relationship. But it's a great talk. But yeah, yeah so y'all never said anything on air that you was like, damn, maybe I shouldn't have said that. And then just kind of, like, I think on air you, like got well, me into a breakup. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure, <laughs> probably did. Well, well, at one point. But I was just gonna say, like, sure, I sure. say, like, I always say, keep things private, keep things classy. Yeah, like, but I feel like I really do live that thought. I'm not just like talking out of my ass because in three years, have you ever heard me complain about my man? No, nah. nah, not even no. one time. Not a, not I've never complained about him. But you're like, different. And Alex is different. And mm-hmm. that's what makes this podcast yeah. different. Because yeah. y'all are different. And I'm basic. <laughs> yeah, he's no. over and here I'm like, just talking about like, yeah, shit I, got, I got broken up with over this <laughs> I'm podcast. I'm fucked up. Like, I just keep it a bed. Yeah. But yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all are fact, different. A, a, broke, a breakup led me to y'all. So God bless the broken road. Oh, hey, thank everything God. happens for a reason. Thank yeah, God yeah. for them for breakups. Sure. Mm, for do sure. It? I want to do it. Want to do it? <laughs> With that being said, if you made it this far in the podcast, there is no reason that you have not commented. Let us know how you feel about us on the Patreon at the Mixer. The list can continue to go on. But if y'all are here, that means y'all really fuck with us, and we really fuck with y'all too. So. <laughs> Please make sure y'all let us know. Again, I shouted out the silent listeners on previous episodes. The silent listeners have not been so silent. What up, y'all? And we appreciate y'all. Facts, facts, facts. In a real major, major way. Yeah, it's been great. Alex, Reggie. Yo, Reggie, don't ever bring me a bag with fire on it again. I got PTSD, girl. (laughs) From Pierre. I ain't gonna lie. No, I love the gift. You see the gift is right here. I'm not going front twin. 
I almost cried here, but I kept it player. I, <laughs> I kept know. it player. I almost like you I got know. me some drip. I feel good about it's okay. that. Yeah. And it's some good drip. You ever feel bad somebody copy you some bad drip and you got to act like you like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I liked it. That's why I made sure you liked it before yeah, I gave it to you. Yeah, you Yo, did and that. Reggie, way, Reggie got she, did she gave us some cookies last week. Was that last week or two weeks ago? Oh, Fire, yeah. bro. Yeah. Did I, oh, I did. I yeah. ate them all the first don't night. Ever so say my, really... Don't ever say my man's getting no cookies in your life. <laughs> I didn't say Alex. Don't ever say my man's getting. <laughs> I love nah, gift giving. This is my man. Reggie. I look at Reggie. Reggie's my man. I don't. Reggie's the bro. I be talking to Reggie like bro. she's really one of I would fucking hope so. Like, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Like, Reggie, I be talking to Reggie like, yo, yeah. that's my man's. Like, yo, Reggie, you know I'm about to yeah. go punch on that shit. No, for real. And she be like, punch is crazy, <laughs> yeah. but I get it. All that thirsty shit. I be like, show me her. Oh, she died. Yo, wait. No fun. Yo. Confession, and then we out of here. These are my confessions. Me and Reggie have the same type. We do. It is so bad. We can look. We could go to a a party, and it's like hundred girls there. We'll both pick the same one. (laughs) Yo, it's crazy. It happens every time. Every time. Like, thank God for John. Nah, thank God. Cause keep that would have been a street. crazy two minutes. <laughs> keep kidding. her off the street. Look what y'all doing. Look what y'all doing at party. <laughs> With that being said, yeah, we man. hope y'all see y'all Saturday, August 17th facts, at facts. the Need to Know Podcast Mixer in Brooklyn. Yeah. Meet us there. Beat us there. Work. It's the Need to Know Podcast. What you need to know, when you need to know, on the Need to Know Podcast. We will catch y'all again next week. We will let y'all know how the mixer is too. We will. If you missed it, that's on you. It's a vibe. But yeah. we out of here, gang. And don't gang. forget, Jamaicans, please stop making a macaroni and cheese, all right? All right. Macaroni. Gang.